You were listening to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan, as always, joined by Callum and James. How are you going, guys? Not Good. bad. Um, if you're listening, Alan, we miss you. He wanted to be here, <laughs> he wanted to be here but he's got the COVID at the moment, yeah. so he can't be here. He didn't, Stay he wasn't, safe. He wasn't here for weeks. Then he comes on yeah. last week, and he's like, oh, I'm definitely going to come on next week, and then he gets the COVID. Well, like, yeah, we were talking, we're talking about um, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever tonight, and... He really wanted to come and uh, talk about this yeah. the show, but unfortunately he can't. So. Well, Get yeah. well, Alan, please. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, listeners will know we've been talking about, like, how, you know, over the last few weeks, last couple of months even. When did Black Panther, when did Wakanda Forever come out? November? October, November, something like that? I think, I think it's, it's like a 12 It's week. November 2022. So it's basically a, a 12 week turnaround. Yeah. So, anyway, like we've been talking about how, you know, the MCU, like we like the MCU. I've seen all the shows and all the movies. Um, I'm up to will, date too now. Yeah, I will continue to keep up with them. Like I like them. But it gets to a point where they've, and we've talked about this before, where all the MCU movies are the same level of quality yeah it's like a no you know what you're gonna get they're like the mcdonald's of movies it's like they're not particularly good they might make you sick but (laughs) it's just like they're satisfying uh, every once in a while yeah and any it doesn't matter where you go to in the world they're all the same (laughs) and that's the kind of thing is like even though i like the mcu and i'll continue to keep up with it it's just i got to a point you know, or well, we all got to a point really where, yeah. l- like, like late last year, where cost of living is so high, where we're so busy with work and stuff, that it's kind of like, why are we spending time and money going to the cinema to see these? Also, no good yeah. movies are coming out anyway. Yeah, and also, it's like, yeah. that's like part of a large issue as well. Yeah, we've talked about it before where the only movies that come out to the cinema are like, uh, superhero and, movies and recently two of the movies we've been anticipating wanting to go and see have basically been ruined by the trailers yeah that's another thing so we're not but, incentivized to go out and see yeah, these movies anymore it's just it's just like the movie and with the movies we do really want to see and the best movies of the year are the ones that get limited releases and we have to go out of our way to see them um, yeah, or wait until they eventually come on to yeah, streaming and by exactly. then everyone's already seen it yeah and and so like with the MCU, we're just kind of like you know what like why why are we kind of wasting so much time and money on these when we're already paying for Disney Plus? We know they're going to come on there in a couple of months anyway. And so like from now on, we're just kind of like just waiting wait. waiting for the Disney Plus because I mean, I, so far I've been lucky. I haven't been I wasn't really spoiled that no, no, much. I wasn't spoiled at all for this. Yeah. No, I never really went into like and it I wasn't mean, it wasn't high on my I need to watch this movie. Yeah. List. And it, it's not it wasn't Black Panther that was the last straw. Like I wanted to see Black Panther. But it just it it all this happened right. all at that time that Black Panther yeah. was about to come out and we were like, you know yeah. what? I don't want to spend the money on this. Black Black Adam came out. Didn't want to spend the money no, on it. Yeah. Shazam 2's coming out soon. Don't want to spend it. Uh, Ant Man's coming yeah, out well, uh, in I a couple to, in a couple days. I think. I was saying to Nathan, like we we're talking about this um, on the way to the uh, on the way to the movie. I think with, or something. Um, I don't even like uh, Ant Man's coming out, and there was a time where I would have been really really excited to see Quantumania. Yeah. And now it's just like a curiosity to me. Like I I'm want like, to. I'm like cool. I, I don't want to go to the movies to see it. Yeah. Though. I want to see Quantum Mania because I know it's the big introduction of the new, you know, Kang, the new main villain, and I know it's going to be a big deal. But I'm just kind of like, I don't want to spend the money, time and money, going to the cinema when it's all CGI stuff that we always complain about, and we know it's going to be the same level of quality as all the other movies, and and then it's just like we're gonna, and then it comes in Disney Plus, which is basically quote unquote free because we're subscribing to it yeah. anyway it'd be like going to see it'd be like if stranger things episodes were released every couple of months at the cinema yeah and you you kept paying to see them but then they came to netflix a couple months later yeah just so free anyway up. you'd be like well just why it's just points. wait we'll just, like, yeah, why so would i go see that on the big screen you know it's what it's going to look like exactly. you know what it's going to be like so at the moment we're just waiting for the disney plus release yeah and we're happier that way, I reckon. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. happier that way. Also, exactly what you just said, they're all the same. Also, yeah. it's, they're also all, they're, it's kind of like, I got to a point where these movies are boring to me. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, because they it's, all it's the, the McDonald's thing. You know exactly yeah, what you're going to exactly. get. And it's not Black Panther's fault. No. It's not, you know, it's not this movie's fault, but it's the fault of the 
the factory, the Marvel boilerplate, yeah, the, kind exactly, of, yeah, uh, factory, yeah, which we've been complaining about for years. But it finally, it got to a yeah. point last year where we were like, the, yeah, now they're so formulaic, you know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. And especially, I say, th- I say that having recently just finished She Hulk's last uh, episode, yeah. And they kind of talk about that a little bit, yeah. But which I think, is a moment of like awareness in yeah, a sea of. But for me, per, I mean, we won't go into it too much. But it's like for me, per, that's not enough just to point it yeah, out. No, yeah. I like, know. They go, oh, oh ha ha, ha they get, ha, they get ha, it. Ha, they know about it. We're not going to do anything. But they're not going to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's also putting your money where your mouth is in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, we also we all always let's face it always complain about the state of the movie industry how they don't put they don't put interesting movies in the theaters anymore. It's all just the big blockbuster Matrix, Marvel movies yeah. and DC movies and whatever it's like well this is in a way i mean our, our money doesn't impact the film industry by any means but it's also like i said it's well, also a type of uh, protest unintentional not, protest on yeah our part. it's not even a, yeah it's not even a protest um, it's just like because it's like i'm not spending my money on these films anymore because i don't want to like we saw knock at the cabin yeah. yesterday that's where i want my money to be going at, in in ticket prices yeah. you know Luckily, it's not that I'm, I'm not interested in the mcu but it's like like yeah, you know, well, I'd rather like, my money go to interesting movies. Well, that's the thing is, luckily, like horror movies still come out, so like we like to go see those. Um, but yeah, the, the actual, like I said, the good, great, the best movies of the year are the ones that you have to go out of your way to see. And there was a point before the pandemic where I was going out to see them more often, and then now after the pandemic, I, I haven't had time or money to go out and see things at the Nova or the Astor or stuff like yeah. that. And I want to get back into that mode of going to see movies at the cinema that are actually worth it. Yeah. Um, and even though they might t- t- be, go, I'd have to go out of my way, it's not just at the local cinema. Um, like, that's what I want to be. Want to sp- I want to spend my time and money on those things. Yeah, I mean, we went Rather to- than on the yeah. thing that's going to come to Disney Plus, I'm going to watch it anyway. Remember how joyous it was to see the Fableman? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly like I really want to see the whale, you know, like yeah. the th- like those kind of those are kind of the, the kind of quite real movies that I want to be going out and yeah. spending time and money on, um, and even though they they might uh, it might cost a bit more time and money yeah. than the Marvel stuff that just plays at the local cinema. It's like that's what I want to be putting my yeah putting your your uh, yeah. voting with your wallet you exactly know? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's it's not that Black Panther is the problem. It's not that like we don't like the MCU anymore. It's just like the MCU is point, what yeah. it is, and it's like we're just going to be um, waiting for the waiting the releases, for Disney yeah. Plus and and watching it there and and you know and and like Nathan's doing like catching up when he feels like it and yeah. not not feeling obligated to to keep up all the time because it does because this so massive universe is so interconnected it can feel like homework having yeah, to watch yeah, all the yeah, shows yeah. and the movies and like i always you know I, every time we review an mcu movie i always say you're either in or you're out yeah, yeah. and it's at a, i think it's at a <laughs> point now <laughs> yeah it's it's at a point now where i'm like i think depending on the next few yeah. shows i'm like i might have to be more selective because there's so much stuff out that i want to watch yeah yeah um but yeah, um, we saw Black Panther, came out on Disney Plus a few days ago. Um, we all enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I thought it was stronger than the first, yeah, personally. Yeah, I, I, when, when Calm told me that, I'm like, you know what? I can see where you're coming from. Um, I, I don't like the lead as much. Well, that that's that's a controversy given. behind yeah, the scenes. I mean, that's yeah. a given. No, I'm not talking about the actors. I'm not talking oh. about the actors. <laughs> well, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. But, <laughs> but like, I think that's the... I mean that's the problem with the movie that's not a, that's not the movie's fault is that yeah. unfortunately the massive loss of Chadwick Boseman yeah. like their main star is he like, was a, such a charismatic star yeah and, and it's, it's just, hard for anyone to follow that up yeah and it, it's just like that I mean that that was I mean I hate to say it but it's like I wanted to see the movie just to see how they deal with that yeah a kind of morbid curiosity I was yeah. the same I was like this is you know, because I'm sure it upended their plans as, tra- you know. Mm. Um, was, oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's like they had to go back to the drawing board for what they thought they were going to do with Black Panther. Yeah. And I was like, how do they adapt? And you, you can, you know, <laughs> as, as much as we enjoy the movie, you can feel that loss. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll get to spoilers in a minute. It's just, I mean, it's, it's out on Disney Plus now, so it's not like it's, it's not new in the find. cinema. So, we yeah. have to mm. skirt around the, the spoilers. Yeah. But uh, I think... Um, yeah, I think much much like when we reviewed... I remember when we were... Another reason why the MCU... 
Remember a few episodes ago, we were talking about re-reviewing yep. old reviews that we yeah, already, yeah, yeah. like movies we already talked about. Yeah. yeah. And I think like every time we talk about an MCU movie or a superhero movie in general, we often talk about the the reaction to it, you know, everything around it. Yeah. Um, And I remember when Black, the first Black Panther came out, we reviewed it on the old show and we were talking about how... The, the audience was halved. People were saying it's the best movie ever or the worst movie ever. People yeah. were saying it's the best MCU. People were saying it's the yeah. worst MCU. And I remember us spending a long time going like, it's actually a pretty good MCU. It's, it's better than this. It's better than that. It's not as good as this, not as good as that. And we spent so much time talking. You know, remember when, when we reviewed Joker and we were like, oh, people are talking about it's people going to yeah. shoot up cinemas. <laughs> and it's like, it's all this stupid stuff that we talk about. Especially with comic book movies in general, it's easy to get caught up in the, yeah. the whirlpool Because it's of the big like, pop culture yeah. thing that everyone's talking about that, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. trending or whatever. And so we often talk about it becomes a around part of the conversation, it. yeah. Yeah. And so I think also waiting for Disney Plus, it helps like all that stuff's already Gets happened. Gets rid of the chaff, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like now we just talk about the movie itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that helps. Yeah. So... Yeah. Did you guys watch the IMAX enhanced version? Is that was it automatic or did I have to select? I think you had to select it. Well, no, I didn't, which is disappointing. Yeah. They should so, have made that clear. Uh, that's why I want to say it now before we go into spoilers. Is if you ever watch a new uh, MCU movie on Disney Plus, before you start it, go to the extras tab. Um, or is it the extras? Yeah, extras tab. Extras or details. What there's extras, and, or there's another tab next to it. That's and it has two versions of the movie. It has the normal version and the IMAX enhanced version. That's where frustrating. I'm pissed now. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the whole movie when I could have been watching a superior version. Yeah. So, I mean, the movie's still like letterbox for most scenes, you know, 2, 235. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then when the big action scenes happen that they filmed in IMAX, it, it, that's blow, in the norm- it blows that's out in, that's to 16 in, that's by that's 9. In the normal- no, that's in the normal... Yeah. That's in the <laughs> normal cut as well. The 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 Because um, I remember being... I remember watching the climax of the film and, and then it, it kept switching, switching? from, from okay. widescreen to full frame. So maybe it, it does go automatic. Oh, maybe, 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 maybe because I have a fancy TV, not to blow my own horn. Maybe um, it so depends maybe, maybe on, it, yeah. if you have Dolby Vision, maybe it automatically selects. Selects it, Because yeah. I know when you run the app, it comes up with the Dolby Vision logo yeah. and stuff. So maybe it, it detects but that. To make, to make sure... I'll double check. Yeah, yeah. double check at to, home if you're going to watch sure, an MCU Yeah, film. when you're going to watch an MCU. Also, I always forget to mention this when we talk about MCU. Um, both shows and movies. Before you watch a new MCU show or a new MCU movie, on Disney Plus they have these little shorts called MCU Legends or Marvel Legends, and it's basically like a little recap of certain characters. Yeah. So like before Doctor Strange two came out, you can go on Disney Plus and go to uh, Marvel Legends, and it has like Doctor Strange recap, and it shows all these appearances in the ev- oh, all the cool. movies. And it just has like little, little clips Contextual from, things, yeah. Yeah. And then at the end it says, you know, Doctor Strange is in... Will return will in, return next, in yeah. uh, the next movie. So that's helpful, you know, because I, I like to go on YouTube and watch the recaps um, before I watch the next show or movie. But it's... Disney Plus has like an official section that's called, cool. called Legends where, you, yeah, there's just little shorts and they have little characters. That's awesome. Um, little char- you know... Yeah, 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 scenes of all the characters throughout all the movies, not just the movies yeah, that yeah. that they're ti- their title movies. That's Excellent. awesome. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I guess we should go straight into spoilers because yeah, it's been out for a while and it's on Disney Plus, so it's easier to see. Yeah. So full spoilers for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, and also spoilers for all the other MCU movies. And all the other shows except for She Hulk and Miss Marvel because Callum hasn't seen it yet. Nathan and I have. Oh, uh, you boys can go nuts. But I don't think it's really. There's nothing we're not, really not going to talk about that. Relevant, I'm just no. being careful yeah. just in case but there's, there's someone no, there's out there. There's nothing really relevant outside of a hilarious scene in the last episode of She Hulk where I've already mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> and a, and a mention of a mutant in another show, yeah. which, yeah. But other than that, there's nothing really. Um, yeah, but mainly spoilers for Wakanda Forever. Spoiler warning. Yeah. Um, okay. So, look, I like much. It. Yeah, much, um, much like the first Black Panther, the strengths of the movie are the cast, the costumes, the production design, and the music. 
Yeah. I think when we saw the first Black Panther and everyone was like, it's either the worst or the best or the worst movie. F- for, for me, and I think you guys would agree, it's like the reason we enjoyed it is because of those aspects. Those aspects were really strong. And even though the CGI was bad and the action was dodgy. The, C- the CGI... Well- Special special yeah. shout out to the bad CG in the first one. At the yeah, climax. exactly. Especially yeah. at the special climax. Shout yeah, out. it's just like awful. Some of the worst to put the film in MCU. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's like even though that det- that's a massive de- detraction from the movie, it's like the other parts it was were still so a strong. strong. Film. And yeah. I think the second movie has the same problems with the CGI and the like all MCU movies have with the yeah. boring the boring kind of standard action scenes. But the costumes, the cast, the production yeah. design, and especially the music, I think, yeah, it, that's what holds it up. So it's it's interesting, right? Because I don't know if I talked about this on the show, if we talked about the trailer when it first dropped and all this information. I don't think we did. But I remember talking to uh, the guys when the trailer first dropped and we found out that Namor was the villain mm. and we saw pictures and stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that design. You know, it's so... Mm. I know he looks camp or whatever in the original comics. He looks kind of dainty. Yeah. Not, not dainty, um, quaint, I should say. Yeah. And like old school kind of superhero design. And I, I, He's I one of the first Marvel superheroes, if I'm not mistaken. One of the first, along with Captain America. And so he fought in World War One. Even with, before, I think even before Captain yeah. America, he they created Namor. Yeah, he was one of the I'm originals. Mistaken, yeah. yeah, And I, a, a change from the, uh, the comics to the MCU is that he's like more modern... Not more modern, but he. I don't think he fought in the First World War in, in the MCU canon. No, no, this that's is hard a different. To, that, that's, 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 that's you're getting, to, you're getting yeah. into the wheeze of like nerdy yeah. comic book territory. Yeah, that's yeah. hard to write into the new canon with Captain being out of the picture and all that. Yeah, Cap. yeah. Um, anyway, I did like the costume design when I first saw the art and the trailer and all that. I was like, it looks dumb. Why are they changing his? Uh, why are they changing him so much? I, I like the- my normal knee jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I was pleasantly surprised. By how much I liked the new interpretation, I think. I, say his name right. Uh, yeah, Namor. Namor. Yeah. Uh, Kukul Khan. Kukul Khan. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, <laughs> no, but I really, I really the liked second the second appearance of Kukul Khan in the MCU. Second appearance. Yes. The actual god Kukul Khan, or was in one of the is Thors. In Thor. Of um, course. Yeah. Uh, Love and Thunder. Makes sense. Uh, Love and Thunder. Ah, oh, in the yes. god arena. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, because I wasn't sold at first, but his actual costume when you see him like moving around and doing things it looks nice. Yeah. Um, even his characterization, there's a lot of pathos to him. I think um, I, I, the villain in because uh, I didn't like Killmonger. You know what? Oh, I mean? really? Like, straight out of the bat, I was like, he's a. Con- they tried to make a. They tried to make a villain Shakespearean, and they failed. Which was what I'm I think sure one I was... of the strengths of the first movie is Killmonger because like he, <laughs> because he's a good villain. He's like the an- he's anti Black Panther, and yeah. you 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 100 get where he's coming from. He's just going about it in the worst way, and I feel like. The reason n- no I will more say one of the re- <laughs> one of the problems I had <laughs> no more. one of the problems I had was I should be honest a little yeah I didn't like Killmonger but people vaunted him so much and then I was oh, like people definitely hyped, yeah, yeah, yeah and I was like he's not that guy yeah yeah but anyway, my point is I-, I think the villain in this one to me is a lot stronger I liked him more a lot more than Killmonger because well, I think he I had mean, a is he he's not really I wouldn't he's not a, call he's him, not a he's classic not a villain. villain in the classical sense yeah. well, he's think, an antagonist not a yeah, villain I think that like. Which like, is an important distinction. Yeah, I like Killmonger and I like the fact that I think Namor is also a strong villain because he's similar to Killmonger in you completely understand where Namor is coming from. Like, you kind of get his deal. He's just going about it in the wor- in the awful way. He's, like, killing people. Yeah. And that's why he butts heads with the heroes. Um, but because of Namor's history in the comic books as an anti-hero and then a, a superhero, he... He has to sort of go in a different trajectory than Killmonger, whereas Killmonger has always been a villain, and yeah. so they kill him off. Whereas Namor, they have to give him a redemption. Yeah. Um, but I like they. I think they're similar villains, and you can't you completely understand yeah. what they're doing and why they're doing it. They're just doing it in the worst way. They both have motivations that, that aren't you necessarily understand. evil. Yeah. They're not yeah. like Doctor Doom, who does as he pleases. Does yeah. He's just evil yeah. for the sake of it. Yeah. And yeah. if they ruin that in Fantastic Four. <laughs> You're I'm, done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin Feige, I'm going to come to your house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not like, that hard a person to get right. Come on, guys. <laughs> no, um, that, yeah. That, and he has to be camp. Super camp. Yeah. And he toots as he pleases. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, which is... Uh, that could be a conflict with Namor. In fact, you know, in the comics, he toots Namor's horn in the meme. 
And uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, do not toot the horn. And of course, Doom says, Doom toots as he pleases. And then he toots the horn. Anyway. I'm sure they'll, yeah, I'm sure they'll put a little Easter egg to that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so my point. That'll be like, that'll be like the um, after credit scene. Yeah. Doom like picks up the shell. And he's like, toots. Yeah. Anyway, my point is that I, I was really impressed with the depiction of uh, Namor. I thought that yeah. he had a really, he had a really think- detailed textual backstory which i liked the whole his kind backstory of, was good his yeah. flashbacks were really well done they made you feel an empathy for him which, think, which didn't come through to me completely with killmonger yeah because killmonger just had this whole kind of oh man do you know what it's like you killed poor, my dad poor yeah. sucks. i I'm the, the I'm the, i have yeah. the worst life in the world because i'm the only poor man on earth and yeah. i'm gonna make everyone pay yeah. well the more to me felt more not well, multi-dimensional he, but yeah. he had a sense of he's also got a more supernatural he, background. yeah but he also had this element of i have people to protect that, that are my own yeah and he was like, and you're in direct... It wasn't that Wakanda was... Like, Wakanda wasn't villains to Na- to Namor. Mm. But he was like, you have to understand that I have my own empire to protect as well. Yeah, just as you protect Wakanda uh, and they from have the a world, similar, we protect... They ta- have similar values, yeah. you know what I mean? Talakan, yeah. So is- I thought it was interesting to see Na- Namor's values being thrown at them. Because that's the way they treat was, the outside world yeah, as well. It, yeah. it was interesting because it's like, both these nations are essentially the same. Exactly. And yeah. they're throwing... They're like... Conf- they're having conflict because their values, everything basically is the same, right? Yeah. yeah. One's yeah. Just underwater, one's not. Yeah. Um... But that's also a problem that I don't think they've adequately dealt with. Like, how do you deal with an isolated nation and make them come across well, generally? As, as an a isolated nation part. that is technologically, so technologically yeah. advanced that they... Yeah. Like, yeah. one of my problems with the movie is at the start when the Queen comes out and they're begging for help from the Queen. No one else well, knew what the French did. But yeah. they're just like, can you help us with this? Help us with this. And to quote, can- paraphrase Callum as his response was, the queen comes out being like Jay, MJ and Silent Bob. Yeah. You were the ones that are the ball. Yeah. Because, and it's like, you know what no, I mean? But it's like, I feel like how do you, but that, you're meant to also, you're meant to also be empathetic to what kind of, yeah. but yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to do and that we when were, they also come across as being we were, like, I'm not so going to help you. Yeah, I'm arrogant. Help you. We were, it's arrogant. We were talking it's, about this off air where, so the, the for, that, that's the whole point of the first Black Panther is the movie ends with uh, T'Challa opening up. opening up Wakanda to the yeah. world and saying, we are going to help everyone. Yeah. And he uses Killmonger's neighborhood as the first outreach yeah. program and he puts Shuri in, in in charge of it yeah and he says we are not going to we are not going to create any more killmongers we are not going to make the same mistake our ancestors a rising tide keeping keeping our technology to ourselves we're going to help the world and then they probably shut the gates and then (laughs) but then chowick boseman dies yeah so all of a sudden your main uh empathy driver (laughs) yeah (laughs) your the main driver of that outreach program is, out of the picture. is gone and yeah. the movie has to do so much heavy lifting just to fill his shoes but i feel like the right way would be like keep that global empathy going with this is what the king would yeah. want and the movie definitely fails in that yeah. regard like the movie maybe should have even like see that's the thing is they had to put so much focus on the fact that shuri has to fill the grieving yeah. process he, yeah. her brother's shoes yeah that sh- you can't have a lot of spend and then you've got no more and all the other stuff that you can't spend a lot of time going dealing with the with oh yeah. you know with the outreach program shuri has to overlook yeah. the outreach process the queen now has yeah. to overlook so i understand on one hand but yeah, yeah i guess it is a failure of the movie that they well, the, don't do more for context they, they mention it like there's an outreach program yeah, yeah. And whatever, i will say though uh, for context the movie is kind of filled with a sense of irony to me because the first scene is the un bringing up wakanda um because there's a whole thing with how they're not uh giving them the technology to detect vibranium mm. because the the logic in the un is what if there's vibranium bombs what if somebody manages to make a vibranium yeah, bomb? You can use it we for have weaponry. we have no way to detect that it could be catastrophic if it gets in the wrong hands mm. and what kind of response is vibranium belongs to us no one else now the, yeah. the ironic thing to me is that the problem they have is like nathan said they're facing a second wakanda which also has vibranium and they're like oh no because like yeah, they're the Talakan only, has it they're as now well. the only power who yeah. can actually face, um, and they're not making any friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I forget the name. I'm sorry. I'll call it Atlanteans for the Ta- sake of Talakan. Yeah, or? coherency. Yeah, I don't know what you call the people though. Yeah, well, the, we're talking the Talakan people. The Talakan, Tal- yeah. Telekinese. Telekinese. Yeah, Telekinese. the Talakan. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but it's it's ironic because they We should say act- in in the comic books, Namor is from Atlantis, but for the MCU to avoid. Uh, conflicts with the dc aquaman movies 
they just renamed it to Tulakan, which is like an ancient Aztec mine. Yeah, to fit with the redone aesthetic city. as yeah. well. Yeah. Which we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, but I find it ironic that but their reticence to assist the UN countries with vibranium ends up being one of the core struggles they have it's is a, there's no one they can call on yeah. to fight. Like, how, you know, it's like uranium, uh, uranium, vibranium versus vibranium. Yeah. And no one else can help them. Mm. I think it's also, we were talking about this off air as well, it's like, it's, there's a larger problem with superhero movies where, in reality, if these people, if these super-powered people or these people with tech, this massive technology existed, there would be a massive danger. Because yeah. you can't trust an individual like Tony Stark to do the right thing with all his power. Also, you can't but trust... But because it's a comic book yeah. and because it's a fantasy yeah. and we're, they're heroes... We have to believe that yeah. he knows to do the right thing. He's not going to give the government his Iron Man suits because he knows they're going to do bad I'll things a, with it. Or mis- misuse it. Yeah. And, of course, they do in the movies with, with Justin Hammer and, like, the whole second movie is about that and whatever. And we know, as an audience, Tony Stark will always do the right thing. He might lose his way a bit, but he will always... He gets on track eventually, yeah. yeah. Whereas in real life... You're like, you can't trust that guy. The government needs to step in. Someone needs to step in. Yeah, there needs yeah. to be checks and balances. And unfortunately, as we've seen in the world recently, the government's not to be trusted either. Those checks and balances often don't work. And so it's a much com- more complicated issue. So it's a problem with superheroes as a whole and not just Wakanda is being greedy or selfish or whatever. It's just like the more you imprint the real world and real- like reality onto it, of course, the less you're like, the less yeah. uh, sympathetic oh, you feel towards the Wakanda oh, of people. Course, but it's also just for, basic hypocriticism. Yeah, at work. yeah. But in the context of the movie, it's like you know Queen Ramonda when she says those things. You know she's going to do the right thing with Vibranium. You know the Wakandan people yeah. are good people. You know the Black Panther is a hero, yeah. and he would never misuse Vibranium you know, to take over the world or whatever. I think the only problem, I mean, you know, I know this is just a writing issue with the whole, when they introduced um, Black Panther, right? Yeah. When they introduced um, Wakanda, I should say. The whole conceit as well, I feel is flawed when they introduce Wakanda as, oh, Vibranium only exists right here. Yeah, because of the asteroid, the one specific, the, the one yeah. specific yeah. asteroid. And I'm like, that conceit already put well, them that- in a difficult situation when they put themselves in a basket where it's like, okay... It's like they are protected. But that's what the- that one makes them special, though, because if, if if yeah, because if everyone has it, then it's just like, well, what's yeah. and the fact that oh, there was a second meteor meteor like, that landed in the ocean and that Talakan like I said, became that's the ocean. What, that's what makes it such an interesting struggle because you're for, like. You're looking at it in in a way that it's, You're a, not it's, just it's, a, it's a conceit. Yeah. I'm looking at it in a way that they're trying to fix that by giving the Telecom people also vibranium. Yeah. So now it's like Wakanda has to realize that they're not the king of the hill anymore yeah. because there's other people. And that's just the start. For all we know, no, there's but, more people no, who have what, access to vibranium yeah. in what, the future. But what, but, I also, meant is, but what I meant is how do they know? They're a secretive nation who've never left the boundaries to a great, great extent. How do they know there's no vibranium out there? I think there? the fact no that one no one's ever it. found it in the history of... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, they know. No, no, come on. That's like, what's that quote? All, um, all, um, re- all advanced uh, technology looks like magic or whatever. They're, they're basically... The Wakandans are basically super science fiction nations. Do you think they don't have like stealth drones uh, to go check things out every now and again? Yeah, they have the um, like, come surveillance. On. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what. But like I said that's what makes the struggle so interesting is because the Wakandans now have to face themselves. Yeah. Uh, not literally themselves. Well, the, but water version, the water version. The underwater version of themselves. Version of themselves yeah. Um, and not and not only right <laughs> and the difference is they also have to fight like a superior. I don't want to say the word race. Um, but like the Wakan, the uh, two well, Wakans the, yeah. have like they're all like fifty percent Black like Panther. Yeah, the Telekan. You know what I mean? Where, whereas the whereas the Wakandans are normal humans with the one Black Panther. The Black Panther takes the heart shaped herb and becomes super powered yeah. and becomes their champion. Whereas the Telekan people all have consumed their version of the heart shaped herb, the underwater version yeah. of it, and so and all of them are descendants of people who. Yeah, so they all have. They're all more powered. powered. Um, Yeah, I will say that's one of that's pretty much the only writing issue I have of the film Mm. is that they're thinking, how can we make these people super powered? And they're like, oh, 
What a coincidence. They also have a heart-shaped herb, which looks almost exactly like the one in well, Wakanda. It makes, it, but it makes sense that if the if the heart-shaped herb grew out of the yeah. vibranium-rich soil of Wakanda, then there's a, going to be a cinema, similar analog yeah, under the I ocean. Know. But I was like... I was like, And I think it did look different, and I think it, it did have a slightly different... Um, yeah, but I was like... Luminosity, is that a word? Yeah, I, was like, I was like, okay, I see what you're doing, but yeah. like, you know, come on. It's, um, but it's, it's the problem with comic books. It's like having someone who's like, I'm the only guy in the world who can do this. And then eventually you have to introduce a bad guy who can also do it. And they're going to, look, I, I'm calling yeah. it right now on the show. They're going to start treating the word mutant the same way that DC treats the word metagene. <laughs> Cause, uh, you, well, you have the, the, one of the, one of the great sequences in the film mm. is the, uh, no more flashback scenes where we get to see him yeah. and his struggles growing up and the issues that he faced, mm. you know, cause, uh, in the comics and in the film, he doesn't age quickly. He was born of a dying yeah. tribe, at least in the MCU. Um, and then, you know, He's they like found the herb. And, years old. Yeah, and they fled underwater old. to escape the Spanish Inquisition and that type of thing. Yeah. And so that's the... the conqu- recan- conquistadors. The, yeah. Yeah. And so you see, like, that great sequence and stuff. And that's really, great. And yeah. that's really interesting. But then, uh, and he just goes to, I think it's Shuri, he goes, and I'm a mutant. No, so, he, he, that's because he he's not just a Talakan... Per person who ate the herb and he became, was the, he was the first the person born, born of yeah. the person who his mother who had yeah. ingested the herb and become superpowered, and he also happened to be a mutant, which is why he has yeah. the no, flying flying ability and but the, 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 the whole mutant thing yeah. I'm like, but they need to establish that before they just start throwing that word around because it doesn't mean well, anything in the MCU as it stands. They've already used it before. They used it in one of the TV shows, which we won't spoil for Callum. Yeah. Not that it's a big deal, but. The, now that they have the rights to the X-Men and they can use the yeah. mutant, it's like they can finally stop pretending that Scarlet Witch got her powers because she I got hate, experimented yeah. on kind I of thing. I hated that storyline. Yeah. And, yeah. And so I think because we... And any any comic book fan, even if they're just a casual fan, knows mutants exist because of yeah. X-Men. So it's not a big deal that... Nah, oh, like, this guy's a mutant. Okay. It was just very cool. blase. That's all I was just saying. I was like, come on. No, nah, it made sense because otherwise you'd be like, hang on, why does he have... Wing, winged feet. Blessed by the best by Kung Khan, obviously, James. <laughs> actually, yeah, that should have just said that. But actually, one thing I will say is like, <laughs> do you th- this is just me. This is, you know, not nothing wrong with the movie, but because he has the little winged feet with yeah. the with the feather, you know, white feathers on the. I was glad they which is that. comic book accurate, yeah. whatever. I like do it. you think it would have been better if he had like? Um, you know, like the snitch in Harry Potter has those little wings that fold up. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, they yeah. come out and they're like little hummingbird wings. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Cool. Do you think true. it would be I, cool if he had like from underwater pack- wings that like shaped his legs so you couldn't see them and then they kind of unfolded and good, fluttered like yeah, hummingbird? Yeah, that's a good... That's a good... That's a good um, Instead of idea, just having bird yeah. wings on his Yeah, ankles? I think so the, the problem with the wings as well is they get well ripped or torn at some point during a fight. Yeah, sure he and cuts I'm like, one. I feel like... Mate, he's lived 500 years. He wouldn't have those anymore. They would have got ripped during... He would have got him snared uh, on a rock. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's oh, tougher he, than the average man. Yeah, no, he's and got super strength. Healing, like, he would have had to scratch them before. Off. He has a no, healing but factor. She, she cut well. him with vibranium. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has, yeah. And he'd have a healing factor too. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, and he, he, their bandage at the end, like he's obviously healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the but in, into, so the... I'm just saying in terms of visualizing the character... It's interesting, right? Because in the comics when he was made, that was probably like a really interesting way to design it. Yeah. And I'm like, but now in the... 2023 so i'm really glad they yeah. kept his his design with the wings because uh, if that character if was made fresh today he would not have wings on his no he would be like, like aquaman Superman. he would just fly out of yeah, the yeah. ocean and uh, um, you just accept i it. do agree with you though i think that it would be cool it would have been interesting it would since they redesigned his character be, already yeah, it would still be in the spirit of the, the, original, the comics yeah. but you'd you'd update it to be like oh it's like underwater wings that kind yeah, of yeah because they've done they've already done that look, with some characters they've yeah. reinterpreted them from modern audience yeah. like the mandarin yeah. Um, with the, the cool bracelets that he yeah, has instead of the, the rings. rings. Yeah. Also, um, I just wish they would have done something a little different. I wish they would have done... So, in the UAP or the UFO zeitgeist right now, mm. underwater, kind of Atlantis is a big yeah. deal. I would mm. have liked to have seen them possibly have like a, a tic-tac a ship. or like a yeah. ship come up and people being like, that's an alien, just as like a little Easter egg. Yeah. Like to be like, you nah, know, I don't like it. Nah, come don't on. Like yeah. that. I, don't like it. No. I mean, the Wakandans already have little UFO yeah. ships, yeah, they're so coming out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I think the the idea of a redesigned wing, with yeah. more in, more in like the snitch kind of, especially um, yeah. aesthetic, would especially be interesting. because you know, no, no more in the 
Namor in the comic books, you know, is like Aquaman. He's just like a a guy from Atlantis, and Atlantis looks like you know futuristic city under yeah. the ocean, whatever. You know, anyone who saw the DC Aquaman movie knows kind of the basics yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like that they took it in a different direction, and they're like definitely distinguishes it. Yeah, yeah. it's like an ancient Aztec, ancient Mayan, Mesoamerican yeah. kind of. Uh, sunken city, yeah, like and a, like a water punk thing going on, yeah, like an ancient Aztec water punk, city. yeah, that's cool. And like, yeah, and just like the jewelry and the piercings and yeah. the mythology. Again, yeah. with my unpopular opinions, I didn't like the water sports, I thought it's too slow. No, that's an Aztec, no, that's it. Oh, okay, doing yeah, it wouldn't it make was sense. Very, like, oh, although they're strong a, though, yeah, so that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was like able the ball to... went slowly through the hoop. I'm like, where's nah, that? Was that's just me a, being picky. Keep in mind, that was just a wink. I interpreted I that know. as a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to I, the Latin Americans. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Well, that's yeah, it's a famous sport in ancient times. Yeah, but no, I, I love that redesign. It, was, it looked great. The yeah. costumes are great. You know, all the the beads and the whatever, and the like. When you see Talakan and she, you know, he takes Shuri underwater, and he, they're going through the the, the villages. Of, yeah, for that water. And there's, there's people. There's people uh, picking kelp or whatever, yeah. and there's like a marketplace underwater. It all looked really great. And was so much more visually interesting and well designed than the Aquaman movie. I never saw and Aquaman, so you I, can skip it. It's yeah. not. It's fine. But it's like yeah, no, I, the it's night and day. Yeah. And considering we just got done talking earlier about how MCU movies are very much all the same and whatever, they could have easily gone the Aquaman route and gone yeah. like Atlantis just looks like Asgard and whatever, and but it's underwater and it's called Atlantis and whatever, and it would have been fine. Yeah. But the fact that they decided to reinvent it, reinvent it, and differentiate yeah. it, I think that really helps. Yeah. Um, and that's probably Namor and the Talakan city and the Talakan people yeah. are the, the best part of the movie. Yeah, like I said, it's strength. Like Namor strengthens the film for me because, like I said, he's an antagonist, not a villain in the classic sense. But it also the his relationship to the city also gives him more depth because you can see. Like the, the connection people, between them. Yeah. It's like with Killmonger, he was just like, you, you, I guess you saw him around the he, poor. He, but ca- it's like, he cared about oppressed peoples, quote unquote, on a, a large, yeah. a global scale. But it, he didn't have his own clan of, of, of family like pr- yeah. to protect. I mean, it, you look at Namor and it's very immediate with him, yeah. which, is what strength, which is what strengthens that character's yeah. arc. Because it I do, sets up his personal stakes I do in a wish, more immediate way. I do wish he had more scenes with his people on yeah. his own. Because there's like one scene... Are there deleted scenes? There might be some, I don't know. Because that'd be interesting there's to not, see. There's none on we'll Disney+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, I think there are not enough scenes of him just like amongst his people or talking to his... Like he has two lieutenants. There's that big muscular guy and, and there's the lady. his... his uh, yeah, like second in command, the lady who I think is Namora. Which I'm like, if if she's named Namora, does that mean it's his sister or his wife, or is it just another woman named ma- named after him? Because there'd be a lot of children, and named it's not after his them. daughter. They would have said that. Yeah, there'd be a so, lot of people named after him. I think there the should have been more scenes with them being like, oh, who are, who are his people? Like in Wakanda, we know the royal family, and we know yeah. the um, Dora Milaje, and we know them. Um, I want to see that in they might Talakan. Be, they might be waiting to tell that in a future film. If, yeah, but I think like it could have it could have yeah. helped this film, especially because yeah. this is the second longest MCU film after Endgame. Yeah, it was like two something. hours and something. It's nearly three. Thirty, hours yeah, thirty nine, two thirty nine, yeah. something like that. But I'm like a large portion of that. One, unfortunately, that ha- a large portion of it is dealing with the loss of your main character, T'Challa. Yeah. yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you can't really get, get around no. that. But a lot, la- another large portion of it's like all the Ross, Agent Ross stuff, and all the Iron Heart stuff, which probably could have been cut out. I yeah. did not, at the end of the day, I did not like Iron Heart's suit. It looked, it looked like crap. It remind me of Mega Man. <laughs> her, her, yeah, her suit looked like crap, and the Dora Milaje's uh, Midnight Angel suit. The yeah. blue suit the blue that Shuri makes them reminded me like, like reminded me like of um Batman of a Batman arc from the New Fifty Two. I was like, what are they? Doing? Yeah, I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, considering how well they did with Talakan and the designs yeah, for yeah. the ancient mind kind of thing, I don't know what the hell they were doing. 
don't uh, know. Um, also, that, yeah. another shout out. At, I'm pretty sure at two hours, 11 minutes, and 45 seconds in, there's a Wilhelm scream. I didn't catch that. I'm pretty sure. I'll okay. have to double. We'll have to go back. I always appreciate check. a Wilhelm, yeah. Wilhelm scream. <laughs> so Mbaku was my favorite person of the oh, world, of of the Wakanda. Remember, remember uh, MCU. The, uh, I remember the first. Like he was a highlight of the first movie, and the second movie does him justice. Like, I want like him. He has, I want to get. He, he needs a TV show all yeah. on his own. Him and his adventures that, with his tribe. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, he's he's such a high. Is it Winston Duke is the actor I think yeah. who plays him? He's so good. You know the he, monkey noises to hype up the boys, yeah. and then just the way he fights. Yeah, you bald headed demon. <laughs> so good. He's so good. And like we need more of him, but I think the fact that the movie kind of ends with him challenging for the place of king and yeah. I feel like that's a Does gamble. that <laughs> No, no, but like cuz it would be super cool if now he's just the king and Shuri is out there doing Black Panther stuff, but cuz he's the better king. He's the better ruler. Yeah. It also frees Black Panther up to be separate from Wakanda in, yeah. in like so you know the problem with like um uh, what's the word? King, um, the King, problem with Captain Marvel, right, is she's always uh, off doing universal business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like if you separate Black Panther from Wakanda to some level, Black Panther can be more with Avengers Who? doing stuff in the movies because yeah. there's not that political stuff back home to always be tying them down. So I think it's an interesting thing Who? to separate Wakanda from Black Panther w- at a political sense. Yeah. W- what was T'Challa's father's name? Was it T- King T'Chaka? Yes, I believe is that so. right? I think yes, it sounds I so. anyway. T'Challa's father was the king, but when he got too old to be Black Panther, T'Challa became mantle, Black Panther. Yeah, and I think so it would be cool, yeah, for Shuri to be Black Panther, but for Mbaku to be king of Wakanda because he's clearly the better ruler. He's clearly has the best ideas. He's always saving their asses. Yeah, and while they're overreacting, he's always the smartest one, making the smartest decision. So yeah. I think that will be cool to see in the future of the MCU. Every time we revisit Wakanda, it's like he's there making the good decisions. Yeah. And Shuri's off doing the spy stuff and the Black Panther superhero stuff and yeah. fighting with the, uh, fighting alongside the the Avengers and whatever. Um, and also we get, we get more Mbaku, which is a plus. <laughs> yeah, give him a, give him a key role, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, we haven't really talked about Shuri. We should yeah. probably go back and talk about, like, because of the loss of Chadwick Boseman, you all of a sudden don't have Black Panther in your Black Panther movie. Yeah. And so the movie starts with his funeral and then is basically, like, over an hour of, like, her trying to sort of reconcile his loss and, and not Yeah, like, her, her personal arc is learning how to deal... Because so she's, like, a, she's a mega scientist, you know? She's a very rational, yeah. logical, scientific Child lady. Child prodigy, yeah. Um, so now like, that means her, she doesn't believe in the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's what like want, a whole... That's, see, this is, this is my point of talking about things outside of the movie, <laughs> but now you've brought it up. Let's no, no, talk no. about it real uh, quick. What, I will say, though, one thing, like, because one of the reasons it interested me in this film is I actually wasn't sure who they were going to cast as Black Panther because I hadn't seen any leaks or... Because no one really talked about it online. Well, there was a question because it's um, like people were like... like they were hinting at... You only saw picture, like brief yeah, plane shots. People whatever, were like, so. I was probably sure about, oh, maybe they're going to be two Black Panthers or um, be N- Nakia and it'll be, you know, like people were yeah. unsure. So I was, I was interested because, um, you know, there was a bit of controversy before the film, when the film was in development because... Um, Oh, what's her Letitia name? Letitia Wright. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she shared the, the, some... The, the, act, the actress who plays Shuri, I really like her. In She was in this really good episode of Black Mirror, and then she was in the first Black Panther, and I was like, I really like her. It would be cool to see her in future movies. You know, in the comic books, Shuri becomes Black Panther. Maybe one day we'll see that. This was before Chadwick Boseman passed away, unfortunately. You know, I didn't know that at the time that she was going to become him, Black so Panther soon. so quick. Um and then, you know, Black Panther 2 is filming and, you know, they have big shoes to fill and she's obviously going to be a big part of that. And I'm like, but I really like her. I think she's going to be good. Yeah. And then the pandemic happens and... Which, unra- which, which, you know, caused some people to derail themselves yeah. publicly. She starts retweeting these like anti-vax Yeah, and like it wasn't and, just the anti-vax stuff. There was also homophobia and transphobia yeah. all in the one little package, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and so I was like, are they really going to make her Black Panther when... Yeah. I don't look. You never know what a person feels like inside. I don't know if she shares well, all know, those yeah. views. So I'm not going to say she does share yeah. those views. But, you know, the Black Panther is now someone who's publicly shared 
dangerous information. Also, probably that, delayed the release um, of the movie. Well, yeah, it did because there was like a <laughs> yeah. thing of like, well, we don't know if she's we, gonna. She can't yeah. come in for shoots. And then there was like there was the news country. that she was injured, and that's why she's taking yeah. a break. And it's like, no, they just probably just hasn't had her vaccine. Yeah, just um, waiting. So, she can't get yeah, to the yeah, airport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that kind of besmirched it a little for me. I, yeah. I was a, you know, the, like I said, I think that she's a great Black Panther. I think that. I was hoping it'd be someone else, kinda, because I was like, it's like, it's like, as it's not the same extent as Ezra Miller, not even close. Yeah. But I was no. like, when you know that someone's disgraced themselves, and you know they have dangerous yeah. thoughts and feelings about things, I'm like, you know, you do I really want them to hard... be championed as one of the faces yeah. of this huge? It's a franchise? hard thing to navigate, especially because you've just lost your main star, yeah. and now the person you replace them with, potentially, allegedly. Is also not maybe yeah. the right, you know, a good it's person. It's one of those things where you don't necessarily want to be um, giving a platform for certain views. Yeah. But again, it's a hard situation. I didn't mean to derail talking no, about No, yeah, no, no. But yeah, um, but, but I think... She, but she does just, a good performance. Just in terms of the movie itself, yeah. she does a great she's performance. Fine. Yeah. She's good in it. Um, and it makes sense that she becomes Black Panther. Yeah. They recreate the heart shaped heart shaped herb, and she becomes. But she doesn't become Black Panther until like the last half an hour, of the which movie? I think strengthens the film. You know, in one way, yes. On the other hand, it's like you go so long without seeing Black yeah. Panther it's in not Black, a Black Panther, Panther movie because Black Panther's yeah. Been in it for a well, time. I mean, and it's again, not a big the, deal the whole, because you do... the whole issue is everyone's dealing yeah. with the grief. Yeah. No, so it's I like understand. They probably yeah. don't want to feel the shoes. Uh, and, you know, until the last moment, because it's like, well, we can't stall anymore. It makes because sense. The Talu Khans are coming. Yeah, we need someone to bring the strength of Wakanda, which is what the Black Panther represents. It, it, it makes sense, but I just like I feel like maybe if they cut out the Ironheart stuff, cut out the Agent Ross stuff, because clearly, yeah. uh, clearly that stuff's in the Agent Ross stuff and um, what's Ju- Julia Lewis Dreyfus's name? Uh, Character name? Val- Val- Valentina. Valentina. Defontaine. Yeah, Defontaine. Valentina yeah, yeah, yeah. Defontaine's character, like their whole thing. That's trying to set up the Thunderbolts movie. And the whole Ironheart thing is because they're having an Ironheart TV show soon. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that's setting up stuff. This is a problem with the MCU, which we always talk about. They're setting up stuff for other stuff that we don't care about right yeah, now. That, because they right could, now we yeah. care about Shuri and her that's journey it. to become Black Panther and her fight against uh, Namor and the Telecans. Like... Because I was thinking about that after I finished the film, how would I edit it down? And yeah. I, I did think... And if, the, if they cut out all that stuff, then you have more time with uh, no more. like I said, yeah. I wanted more time with Shuri, maybe more Black Panther, her in the suit, Black Panther I would have kept the Riri Williams stuff, but I would have altered it a bit. I wouldn't have made her such a key part of the film. I would have had her maybe just... Maybe make, just have her be the scientist who created the... Yeah. tracking device yeah. and not and and hint at Ironheart. Yeah, that's like, what I would have done. You know, you know in the first Iron Man movie where Rhodey sees the suit and he looks at it and he goes, maybe next time. And he doesn't get in it. And then yeah. he doesn't become War Machine until Iron Man 2. Yeah. Maybe they could have done that of like Yeah, she, that's what I would have done. She's created she's uh, created part of the suit but maybe still she have hasn't. the they still have the great scene where they go to the campus which I loved, and then she's like, oh, yeah, you know, is my makeup okay? <laughs> yeah. and I, I like that whole scene. <laughs> that was heat. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't like the... I thought they looked weird in the, the get-ups they're wearing with the, you know, the jumpsuits oh, and stuff. Oh, you didn't like that, that fit? She's <laughs> yeah. with, that, no. that cool, like, tracksuit? Yeah. <laughs> it, looked, it looked 80s and dumb, but no, that's No, no, pe- people... The Grace pe- Jones that's, 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 the, yeah, no, the pointy shoulder pads. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's uh, stylish as hell, yeah. Um, no, um, but also, I, I you wouldn't blend in. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. No, that tracksuit, you could easily blend in. Oh, no, her, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'd, I'd keep that scene in the film. But like not much, I like you know not much more than that. Yeah. So like they get the information they need, and then especially they leave. because the action scenes. Then they set up something that tie into the TV yeah. show for Riri Williams, well, and then you leave it alone. Like with all MCU movies, the action scenes are pretty meh. The CGI yeah. is not very good. It's typical MCU action and, scenes, and especially yeah. when Ironheart gets involved, you're like, oh, this doesn't look very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Riri Williams is good, and um, I'll be interested to see what they do with the show. I but. did say uh, one thing that made me laugh was. I, like it's a very quick section where Riri Williams helps them escape uh, or attempts to escape over a bridge. Yeah, as they're running away from the police because mm. the police found out there's Wakandans illegally in the US because mm. they don't come with a passport. Because like I said, the arrogance thing. They're like, we'll just go. <laughs> we'll just go. I don't think want. it was a passport issue. I think it was like a much larger <laughs> yeah, issue. What, foreign interference issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, it, it, it looks like there's a very quick cut of police moving away from police cruisers yeah. as, as Ironheart blows them up. Yeah. And I didn't see 
see them turn away. So it looked to me like she like killed it's a whole bunch an, of cops. It's an and awkward I was like, That's edit. That's a dark MCU moment. Yeah, it's an awkward edit because you see the cops like the, they they blockade they, like they blockade the bridge with their cars and they get out of their cars and then Ironheart like comes down and you see them turn to run but then it cuts. And all of a sudden, Ironheart just explosion. bombs all of the cop cars. Yeah, and and, explode. Like, got and it looks like hands. she just roasted all these cops alive. But it's clearly supposed yeah, to be that. They like, probably, yeah, could have done a better job. And that's part of the action problem. Is like you don't get a good sense of where things are, spatial awareness. Yeah. Like great action, you know, great superhero uh, action scenes like The Dark Knight. Because Christopher Nolan's such a great filmmaker and he uses so many great te- practical elements, you know where everything is, you know yeah. what's going on, it looks There's great, it's, it. it's very um, easy to understand and see and hear and whatever. MCU does is just CGI stuff, whatever. Yeah. And it feels very lazy and yeah, and that's a problem with this movie too, whereas like a lot of the action scenes are just kind of like... Yeah, yeah. Although I did like the Telecon have the um, water bombs. That was instead cool. Of, instead of like grenades, they're like water. That water was yeah, especially, yeah, that especially was awesome. consi- it, It's because they need water to live, basically. Yeah. It allows them to also keep fighting, so it broadens their also in, it broadens their horizons. In the trailer, when when they ca- when they're all blue, combat. and I was like, "That's a bad idea." You you know, Avatar's coming out soon. You know, like why <laughs> but i like in the movie i like the fact that underwater they're normal yeah and then like it's like normal the skin's skin reaction pigment. to air. yeah it's the skin uh, and, and namor is the only one who looks he's normal the all the time boat, yeah. because he's like c- c- of two worlds kind of yeah. thing that was cool i thought yeah the um, hands like i said the whole the whole atlantean thing um, the reinterpretation was fantastic um, yeah and which is funny because like i i hate it until i'd seen I the did- movie i was like i hate it like comic book man, yeah. no, it stinks. Trailer, yeah, it stinks. It stinks. No, it stinks. Was um, yeah, no, yeah um, I'm sorry. Worst guy. at worst adaptation. Yeah, ever. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yes, Mr. Sherman, everything stinks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. But comic book guys, worst, <laughs> worst Namor ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think but, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, like it, trailer in the trailer, you kind of like, uh, but in the movie, it works really. It, it works. Also, the attack on the 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 attack on Wakanda wasn't bad. When they're I flooding the it. city, I liked. It. I thought it was cold blooded, though. Yeah, like it's like Nathan was telling me before. Uh, much like the original, it's a very angry film, and I was like, yeah, you know, I like a lot of innocent people in Wakanda died, and I was like, you know, it's I, a problem with superhero movies of like like we were just talking about before of like the the fantasy of it. You you suspend your disbelief and you go, these are good guys, these are bad guys, okay. But when you actually think about superheroes and the collateral damage. It, you know, like one of the yeah. big problems with Man of Steel was that ending where people were like, "What, Zack Snyder? You're a maniac! Like you yeah. just murdered all of Metropolis yeah. and didn't even bat an eye." Yeah. And in contrast, the MCU has always been a bit more careful, where they've made effort to be like, "Oh, evacuate the streets before we fight the aliens," kind of thing. Yeah, well, I feel like this is almost the first example of, like. We'll say more they're being, carelessness. They're being a bit... Um, it was maybe just a... Uh, edgy. Uh, no, no. I don't think it was trying to be edgy. I think it was just the, the writers they lost, be too sight, of they yeah. lost think, sight of it. They lost sight of it. I think that's right. Because yeah. there's a bit where Nakia like, shoots uh, uh, tel- the oh, telecom. the sonic gun. Yeah, yeah, and it's like her... like, like sonic. Sonic, Basically like a shotgun, basically, yeah. To, yeah. to the at belly. That, she even says at this range it's lethal. Yeah, and I'm kind of like... <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, Com- it compared felt... Compared to other Marvel films, yeah. it's a bit too strong. Especially because Nakia doesn't seem like the person who would deliberately... Yeah, it's like... It's the whole thing about... Like, you got these characters like, yes, straight up killing yeah, people. Yeah, it's now. like, yes, yes, if there's, like, bad guys and they're shooting, like, Iron, that, Iron yeah. Man would come and blow them all up, and you're like, cool. But, like, the fact that it's, like, such close range and she shoots her and then... And then you see no more like cradling, cradling yeah. that lady as she's dying, and it's just like, yeah, it made made the Wakandans look pretty bad. And I guess that was the point. But also, I was like, this feels overly it, aggressive. That's yeah. for these characters who are, yeah. I think, good people. Like yeah. in, in the I, sense I of, was, I definitely think it was yeah. a writing misstep. Yeah. Um. So um, we have some feedback from Alan, who also saw the film, who obviously couldn't be here today. Oh, okay. Oh, um, did he watch the movie? He did watch Black Panther. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is is he listening? Alan, are you listening? 
I'm not sure <laughs> if he is. Um, he said that the the two issues that he had with the film are both character based. Uh, he says that the anger that Shuri has for the world in her grief, uh, he thinks it's overdone because he thinks that like the anger in the cycle of grief normally doesn't get to the the point where you're like, oh, let the whole world burn. Normally, it's like a they they played it up because like I said, the the film's an angry film, so everyone is is like it's like a heightened sense of anger because the. I mean, it's also like a meter reflection on the death of Chadwick exactly, Boseman like, as well it's as not, the child. It's not only the characters these, are angry for um, losing someone they love. It's like the the filmmakers are angry because they, yeah. they lost someone they love. And so, the, or, like as an audience member, I was angry. Yeah, but he reckons that the 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 sense of drama of like her her rage step in the grief process it was, wasn't earned. It was too pronounced for what we see. Because uh, it's like, yes, she lost her but that's brother. Part but of the, that's part of the story because at the the whole point of the end is she wants revenge. She's going to murder. Yeah. She's going to straight up murder Namor. Um, and, then she, and then she sees that vision of Killmonger and Michael B. Yeah, Jordan comes yeah, back. Don't succumb to it. Yeah, yeah. and she's so like, don't, you know, he's like, come to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, 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 she's, and then at the end, she decides not to. Yeah. And the other issue he had was every time, like, not every time, but a lot of the time they interact with Ross... Uh, they have like a, I guess it's like a nickname for him of sorts. <laughs> oh He's yeah, the, yeah. Uh, their favorite colonizer. Yeah. Um, which of course I should point I out. I also uh, had uh, like not an issue with him. Like, but he's the only friend. He's up to yeah. they, they make yeah, it, it's, it's a joke. joke they make. I do want to. I do want to point out though. Um, obligatory pointing out that Wakanda did not intervene in the slave trade nor the oppression <laughs> yeah. of anyone else. Like so I said, it's, it's a problem with superheroes and comic um, books as a whole, and not necessarily. So you can't so, get on the bandwagon. Yeah. So yeah, so Alum's Alum's feedback on that is calling uh, Ross a uh, colonizer multiple times and he's the only one on their side on the global scale yeah. uh, is is a bit rude. That yeah. uh, was his, uh, his feedback there. Especially when Wakanda is ignoring all the colonization. Yeah. Um, well, maybe That's a separate maybe issue. That, that, yeah. Maybe that could have written that into the movie where at the end they're like, look, we're not going to call you that anymore because even though it's funny, it's just like... You're the only guy who helped us, and you could have yeah, gone to. And, did he know, get arrested at the end? Yeah, he did. He, he was did. on his way to like a yeah. life in prison. You and know they, they, oh, they yeah, busted him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they um, still call him that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I, like, I know it's a joke. Yeah, it is a joke, but it's like, you know... But um, it doesn't also make sense for the characters. Oh, I yeah. see, once is funny. Once is like, oh, get yeah. it, ha, wink, wink. Yeah, and it's then a running joke. It's a now, term yeah. of endearment kind of thing. That's fine, but um, they even talk, like Nathan pointed out to me, they talk about him that way behind his back as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if it was just to his face and they're like, ha, you know, it's an in-joke or whatever, that's... Yeah. Uh, they don't respect the man enough for what he's given for... Because uh, like, yeah. the stakes the stakes for him personally are oh, actually yeah. quite high. He ruined his career. Because um, it's like life in prison yeah and that's one thing they they kind of mentioned this whole kind of he's doing a double agent thing and then he gets arrested mm. but it's like we i didn't realize he'd probably end up in guantanamo uh if they hadn't intervened or like you know whatever some, the, yeah, um, somewhere not nice yeah whatever the mcu version of Supermax. guantanamo is yeah, yeah. what are that floating yeah. that floating thing from you know <laughs> i'm not sure if alan prison. would realize but alan would appreciate this that at the end when you meet t'challa's son mm. he's essentially named junior yeah, <laughs> yeah. His, uh, his name, yeah, his his, name is T'Challa. Yeah, so he's yeah. So he's T'Challa the second. Yeah, but Junior. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I just find it funny. Why? Because Junior be t- is the t- lamest name on the t- planet. T- T'Challa Junior. He could be TJ. That's a cool name. I feel like naming your son your name. Ah, keep in mind it was an honor. That's a personal opinion. I've never liked. If if T'Challa was no, I don't know. If T'Challa was alive, that's one thing. But he's also it's it's like name it's like a. I, I understand it because it, like they're naming it's like it's like it's when a, it, it's like when Paul Walker died and then they named uh, Dom, Dominic names his son Brian, you know, yeah, uh, know after Paul Walker's character. It's like it's clearly a meta uh, no, I know. reference to the I fact think, that yeah, no, this I think actor, you're being a bit harsh because I, I know I yeah. just I just don't like the name Junior. <laughs> That's it's not junior, though. He's, he's not the called junior. You <laughs> yeah. just you now you're you're imprinting your own. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. I thought that was fine. I thought that came out of left field though. Uh, so the, apparently, I've well, heard apparently that's what the movie was going to be. Apparently, about, when anyway. even when Chad McBoseman was alive, apparently that that he he was going to still have a son. So okay, yeah. But yeah, I think I think much like uh, Tony Stark's daughter is like they're definitely setting up the future and yeah. and this 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 idea of legacy that that happens in all fantasy and yeah. sci-fi and 
I did think it's interesting. One of the things I liked about the film was Shuri's scientific mind also trying to come to terms with the fact that, you know, she has to take this herb and have this spiritual experience and all this stuff. Hmm. And then there's a part of her that's like, it's not going to work. You know, it, it, I, I do love that fact about the MCU is well, there's people who are like, you know, I'm a good Christian. Oh, yeah. And yeah. falls like right over magic there. Magic doesn't yeah. exist. Um, science. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like there's like scientists yeah. who are like, magic is a real one. Dr. Like, Strange is standing right Thanos there. Thanos had recently finished collecting the five magic <laughs> Yeah, <rings>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, liked, I actually liked uh, Shuri's um, ancestor spirit plane thing. Yeah, with um, Killmonger. Because uh, it's not who you expect. You know, you expect a traditional experience yeah, with the, the, the father or the queen. Or yeah, the queen. Name. That's the thing. Namor kills the queen. So, Shuri has every right to... Kill them all. Kill them all. Yeah. And you'd be fine with it, technically. Um, but she has to overcome but it. But then when she sees Killmonger, she's like, oh, this is not what I expected. You know, that's like I mean, the- I took from that that the basically the... like. He was her manifestation of anger, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like... Yeah, it's the closest thing she was identifying yeah. to in yeah. that period of time. Yeah, exactly. Normally, when this process is done, you can presume that it's done in a ritual way. You've got the psychological preparation to meet the ancestors. Yeah. This was done in a haphazard kind of way. It's yeah, like it, what just happens, to get it happens. done. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting thing where she's rejecting it, like, I'm not going to do that. And then she's yeah. like, it didn't work. And then she does the Superman punch thing. Oh, that CGI was awful. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was some of the worst I've ever seen. Uh, not worse than the one in um, the Shang Chi, but that's fine. Yeah, uh, that that wagon that fell <laughs> in the first <laughs> yeah. two minutes of the movie, and we're like, oh no, we just laughed. oh no. I, think we, I don't remember we just laughed. We just but like, see, oh, we talk about. I mean, I know we talk about this with every superhero movie, especially every MCU property, but it keeps happening. They use too much when yeah. they don't need to. Don't I understand to. using yeah. it for. You know, that spaceship the big and climaxes the Wakandan. And you yeah. kind of when you it, see yeah. the Wakandan city, um, the capital city, when you see their little spaceships, that all stuff looks great. Yeah. When, Bright and colorful. Yeah. When when you start to get into organic territory, human characters, live m- moving, the movement looks garbage. When you yeah. start getting to things that are impacting each other, fire, water, looks garbage. They need to rein it in. Yeah. And they're not. And this no. is a this is one of the reasons we're not going to the paying to go see yeah. him to cinema because it's like it they're too far gone. People yeah. audiences expect it and the factory, the filmmaking factory, that's just how they're made now. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but allegedly um some VFX guy on Twitter was approached to work on and un- Yeah, we released, talked about yeah. it. So it's like, oh, and he said the conditions were too bad. He was like, I don't need yeah, to work Yeah, they rush it. Yeah. Was Callum here that time when we were talking about it? I'm not sure. I think we'll, so. We'll quickly mention again. It's like, they, their, their, their uh, turnover rate is so high yeah. and their deadlines are so quick that they basically have to CGI that would usually take months, if not years, to make look great. They have to do in a, a month or two. Yeah. And so that's why we keep getting this. They're stretching it too thin. Yeah. If you, like, like, the fact that they have a Black Panther, a physical Black Panther suit that someone created and the actor wears, and then they CGI over it, uh, the amount of time and money useless, you're wasting. Uh, redundant CGI, yeah, yeah. It's like, if you just remove that, automatically you get time and money towards cgi that's yeah. needed somewhere else and also if you're punching something you don't need to cgi it so it flies away right you can attach put a cable on no, it that's and what pull it backwards that, that, they've been was... doing that for a hundred <laughs> years exact, that's exactly what i was gonna <laughs> say much. just just have some guy with a rope pull yeah. it and then you're like wow that we, looked cool we talk yeah, about it every it time whatever you're punching doesn't have to weigh 10 yeah you know, 10, yeah, it's made out of styrofoam <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah we talk about it every time it's just like they the action scenes they need like that whole the climax of this movie with the giant ship yeah. It's like, what the hell was that? It's it like looks, they have one yeah. ship and it's like a really tall ship for it some didn't reason. Look, it didn't look but it has good, a little yeah. tiny sonic emitter at the bottom. It's like, what is this? Um, Just have them on the beach, like punching each other like yeah. an old Power Rangers episode. It would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, why is, the, why is this all this CGI garbage that looks terrible and doesn't make any sense? <laughs> um, I, I did appreciate the climax at the, the battle between uh, Namor and uh, Shuri, I thought was interesting. The dehydration thing, I thought was fine. Yeah. I was like, because, you know, normally they'd be like, oh, I need to hit him so hard. Give me a power glove and I can be like, wham. Or well, something. Yeah. Also, uh, and Martin, um, you'd pick, she seemed pretty all right for having been stabbed. Oh, yeah, she's Black Panther, though, man. Leave her, True, but it was like a full on. Yeah. 
She was like, and, and the, nano, the, the, CGI, the nano suit or whatever. So yeah, the, the CGI, up. the CGI when she when she breaks the spear to pull it out, that CGI was garbage. Like I'm just like, just make a foam spear and have her break it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Like they have all these talented. It's not hard. They have all the money. They have all the money that Disney has behind them, and they have all these talented prop makers and yeah, uh, costume designers and whatever. Use it. Yeah. Um, but I did like the fact that when she was about to destroy him, she did have that. And I don't know if it was because she herself was on death's door or whatever, or she was in a heightened state, but she did see her the um, her mother or whatever in the astral plane, and mm. they, they were like, you know, be, be reasonable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> she, she stopped and remembered who she was, you know, that hero's journey kind of yeah. thing. She, uh, didn't, did she a, didn't turn to the dark side. I'm I did glad she didn't turn that. to the dark side because there's yeah. also a bridge they can't walk it back from when they yeah. get different well, riders it, in the building. It's, you know it's, I mean? it's like I said earlier. It's like because Namor is yeah. Namor, like we, we know we yeah. know she's not going to kill him because. But if it was like Killmonger, they would have killed him off, you know, because it's like uh, that character is not going to. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um. So I thought I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it better than I thought I would. Um, yeah, I was, I was surpri- surprising watching it. I was like, oh, I actually like this more than I thought I would. Um, the end scene I thought was nice where she gets to process her grief. Um, yeah. Even, like I said, you know, like Lady of Science and all of that. And mm. then she go, she ends up doing the traditional way to process grief, which yeah. helps her. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. The- no, it was good. Uh, like, obviously, it has all the problems that the MCU movies have. And it has, maybe, it uses its length maybe not in the way it always should. But yeah. I think those those strengths, like I mentioned earlier, the strengths from the first movie are still present here. And then plus the Namor stuff and the Talokan stuff yeah. is really, it really, it really boosts the film up, I think. Yeah, um, yeah like it, it was good. And, and yeah, I, I liked it. Like yeah. when you said I, when you said you liked it more than the first, I was like, yeah, I can see that. Even yeah. even with the loss of Chadwick Boseman and the fact that black the the actual Black Panther character doesn't come you know, to the end, I, I think it's it, like an interesting movie. It boils down to something really simple for me. I, 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 as much look, this is gonna, as I love the MCU, so this is going to sound mean. For a comic book studio, I should say com- they're not a comic book studio. Hmm. For a Hollywood studio devoted to making comic book movies, they're not very creative. Um, no, yeah, that's and, the problem. Like, you know, they're, they're very vanilla in their thinking. Mm. Um, much like the old DC things. It's just very vanilla. Yeah. I mean, they're better than DC. Oh, yeah. But this feel, th- this felt a bit fresher than I'm used to for the MCU. Not for me. <laughs> no, no, no. In terms of the way they interpreted things, because it's like James said earlier, they the, easily the could design, have gone with yeah. the, the most basic, the, obvious choices. Yeah. But instead, they made some interesting choices. You know, it's not. I wouldn't. The movie call as it, a whole is pretty MCU boilerplate. Yeah, but the, what they did with Namor and Talakan. Yeah, I, I'm, not gonna say, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say it's a the great, most unique. I'm not going to say it's a great film because no. at the end of the day, it's just a superhero movie, and it's just another yeah. MCU. Considering edition, that we, you know, yeah. we've seen some pretty good films, both old we've films talked and about new before, films. Movies as content, and like, like yeah, I said, yeah. it starts to feel like homework. We have to watch them all. And it's all still interconnected. That, yeah, but it does feel it, it's a lot fresher than I thought it was going to be. Mm. You know, and that that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Like I said, they're not going to change their colors because this leopard has defined its spots very clearly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, the interpretation could have gone sideways real quick of Namor and his people. Oh yeah, um, but it didn't. Which, they, like I said, we it should. Uh, the actor who plays Namor is also very. He's good. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he has a charisma. Has to he been him. in much? I don't. I think this is like his first movie. Because uh, he, he nails he's, it. He's yeah. pretty charismatic, pretty confident. Yeah. Yeah, I like his interpretation. Like his presence. He has a, he has like a um like a uh, omnipotent kind Te- of not omnipotent but a regal Ten- Ten- imperial Tenok Huerta, I think yeah. is his name. You know, I did I did cringe when he, he bursts out the old famous Imperius Rex because I'm and like it doesn't make sense yeah, for this version of the sense. character. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well they they, they do give because Wakanda has Wakanda forever. Yeah. And I like they gave Talakan, they gave Rise Talakan, but it's yeah. in the mo- ancient Mayan language. Yeah. So he should have said Rise she says what kind of favor, he should have said Rise Talakan. But because in the comic books he says Imperius Rex, they're yeah. like, Oh, we have to put that as an <laughs> Easter egg. Like it's like it doesn't really that, make yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I guess yeah. comic book nerds, you know, like No, I, he has a he has a like a, a stature that I like. I think he's good for the role because he embodies yeah. it. I'll be interested to see what they do with him in the future, especially when Namor becomes more of a Hero been, yeah. or anti hero. Oh, no, he's been, in, he's been in quite a few movies. It's just, I guess, this is his big his big breakout moment. Breakout, yeah. 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 Um, I'll say one more thing and then we'll move on. Um, 
I like that the subtitle colors change depending on what language yeah. you're speaking. Yeah, so I noticed that too. When the, they the speak, blueness for the Telecon. What? Yeah, one I like that the fact that the Telecon speak that ancient Mayan or whatever dialect they're speaking. thing. Yeah, um, that's cool. Um, they could have easily just done an Aquaman thing where it's just like they all speak English, or it, it it to the audience it sounds like they're speaking English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and that that's subtitled in blue, and uh, the Wakandan language the, is in yellow. Yeah, the jo- Josa. Yeah. Yeah. Chaucer, is that yeah. How you, yeah. You have to click your tongue. Zosa. I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the when they speak, there's a couple of moments in Spanish and French, and that's like just the normal white subtitle. So that's cool. So you can understand when they change. Yeah. Between so, so, one, that's yeah. Cool. So if someone's like you know uh, hearing impaired, you can actually tell if the, the yeah. Dialogue, but yeah. also for people who aren't maybe as in tuned. Uh, yeah, yeah. To, it, it's to just the a, language, it's a, yeah. they can sort of see. Oh, she she just changed the language there. And yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that was cool. I always appreciate movies that have custom subtitles and not just the... Yeah. Yeah. And it, it annoys me when it, if a movie comes out in Blu-ray, when, if you see a movie at the cinema and it has it's custom subtitles... Blu-ray's overlapping. And then, no, 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 no. <laughs> and subtitles no, 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 no. And then they remove on the, the Blu-ray, they remove the custom and just put the plane so that oh. if people change the language, they don't have to worry about... I hate that. It annoys me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, should we go off air and then um, yeah. continue yeah. on? Yeah. A yeah, good so film. Go see it. Not not terrible. Yeah, it's um, on Disney Plus now, so you have no excuse. Yeah, <laughs> still an MCU movie, but uh, it's one of the better ones. Ant Man comes out in like a week or something, but we're For gonna us we're gonna we're gonna wait a couple months <laughs> and just talk about it when it comes on Disney Plus, and hopefully that we don't get spoiled too much. We'll be right back after this. You are back on the Tuesday review, um, so we're gonna move on now. Yep. And um, I believe James wants to talk about the new sort of wave of DC projects. Yeah. So, as listeners probably have seen by now, um, James Gunn and Peter Safran have taken over the DC, like planning out all the DC, you know, and uh, overseeing all the DC um, universe yes. stuff. Um, and they announced recently, like, all the upcoming movies and TV shows they're planning on doing. Um, and I figured since we were talking about Black Panther and, you know, superhero movies, that'd be a good time to, to discuss it. Um, as, as long time listeners know, you know, I hate, 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 hate the Snyderverse. Yeah. And, um, you know, let's face it, the DCEU or whatever they, I don't think they ever ended up officially naming it. But those movies, except for like maybe Shazam or whatever, weren't good. Yeah. Um, I and st- look, I still remember watching um, uh, the Harley Quinn movie. Oh, yeah. That was and awful. then like the whole time I was just dead inside. Yeah. <laughs> it was so bad. And they clearly had no idea what they're doing. And we kept saying they need to get their act together and they need someone like a Kevin Feige who can oversee and who likes, who understands and likes comic books and who can kind of push them in the right direction. And it seems, James Gunn seems to be the perfect guy for yeah. that. Um, he loves comic books. And Peter Safran, is it? Yeah, the, Peter Safran, yeah. yeah. And and it's like, he not only does do they like comic books, but it's like they know like what... Uh, How the heroes know, are supposed to be. Yeah. and, and yeah. They, they, they understand the characters. Yeah, and they're not afraid to... Not just the iconography of them. Yeah, and they're not afraid to just be like, we're just going to make Batman and Superman movies and everyone else. It's like, no, we're going to branch out and yeah. do a whole bunch of different things. They want to embrace the MCU style where it's it's not just the movies. They also want to do TV. Well, they want to do video games. The problem, they want to, you know, they, they want to create media in general, from, which is a problem. Like we yeah, saying, the whole the, content, from the very, content. From the very beginning, the problem yeah. with the DCEU was that the fact they were trying to copy MCU without doing any of the, w- the legwork. Yeah. Um, and also copying the MCU leads to MCU problems, which is the whole interconnected universe yeah. and the sameness. And you can't do this because that guy's going to show up there and, and they, this actor can't play it because this actor, whatever. Um, and we, you know, they, they kept, they kept making these movies where it's like, what, what is this? What, uh, and, you know, Joker came out and was like standalone. I was like, okay, yeah. what, what the hell's going on? And I kept saying, DC need to grow some balls. They need to say, Look, it's just standalone movies. MCU, yeah. the MCU style of interconnected universe didn't really work. 
we're just going to do whatever and do what's best and they need to stop thinking in the way that the MCU thinks of like if an actor's playing Batman in this movie why can't another actor play Batman yeah. in another movie that's like yeah. whatever um, and it seems that that's kind of what James Gunn's doing yeah where he's they're rebooting the universe so the DC the new DC universe will have a sort of MCU style interconnected TV and movie universe but also there will be um but also those movies and TV shows will mm. have their own distinct styles and, and it won't be as samey and factory. Yeah, yeah. But then also on top of that, you'll have um, standalone yeah. stuff. Well, this is called, what is it? Um, this is called Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters. Is, yeah, that's what it's yeah. sort of titled. So like MCU has phases. I guess yeah. this is their first phase one, um, which is subtitled, yeah, Gods and Monsters, which... Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I think... One, well, I mean, one, what's interesting, I mean, as soon as James Gunn announced this, like comic sales of DC <laughs> went up. <laughs> one thing I wanted to so, say, one, there was really a, a, a key difference between Marvel and DC at this point in time is that um, James Gunn in public, I think, I think it was on Twitter or something, he actually tweeted out like a reading list for people at yeah. home of comics of, yeah. of actually specific issues. Specific, yeah. And then those comics sold out completely. Yeah. Um, and so like with Marvel, you don't really get that it, it, when they're, when they're marketing a new Spider-Man movie, for example, yeah. they don't like, Oh, you know, look for the hints from these comic issues. Mm. Like there's this whole kind of Marvel, the MCU tries to distance itself from the source material a little bit. Whereas James Gunn seems to be like, you know, here are our inspirations. Here's yeah. some cool issues for you to look at. And they seem to be like, yeah. he talks to Jim Lee. The head of the DC Comics. Well, DC, we we talked about this, uh, you know, years ago, where DC was in the prime position of having all, like, not only like having all the rights to all their heroes under the one studio banner, yeah, and having all the comic book uh, creators and that under their banner stuffed it. (laughs) Yeah, and they still screwed up. And it seems like James Gunn, Peter Safran are doing the smart thing, which they should have done from the beginning, yeah. is in involving all those people and, yeah. and embracing the comic books and yeah. saying, look, we're not going to adapt this story exactly, but this is where we're getting inspiration from. Yeah. And people have been responding I to mean, that. So one of the so there was a leaked image of a presentation he did to, I guess, a Warner Brothers executives maybe or producers or something, I'm not sure. Mm. But it had the timeline of the of the properties, and I ca- we'll we'll get it out in a sec because I can't remember. Each yeah, of the I properties. got a list of some of the but movies. People and shows. um people noticed that the Superman logo they're using because to James Gunn, Superman is a key figure for DC going forward. Right. That, and, yeah, he, he's um, super, their Superman movie is going to be their like kick off yeah. the phase one kind yeah. of thing. So like the old DC, they put a lot for years. They've just put a lot of importance on Batman. Uh, like, well, he's everyone's yeah, favorite, and he's but like uh, James Gunn wants to elevate Superman to that similar kind of level. Yeah. And people notice that they're using an older Superman logo, mm. which is re- you know represents like what some people. It's still early there. days. It's just like promo. Yeah, yeah. It's just but like, like James, that Gunn, really mean, James Gunn was talking about Superman, but, and yeah. uh, he said that Superman should be hopeful. Yeah, he and, he's saying exactly what we've been saying for years, and yeah. I've been championing for years is like a return to a kind of more you know uh, hopeful. Yeah, truth, uh, justice, and the American way. Boy it's Scouts, like, Superman. Yeah. Yeah. It's how Superman is supposed to be. How Instead these, of like how an these angry heroes, kind of you know punchy kind of Superman. Yeah, exactly. So he gets it, um, and it's still early days, and this could all come crashing down. And I'm very very uh, weary of how this yeah. could go, but. Um, yeah, at the moment, it's like, oh, this could be cool. I think one thing that's interesting is that on the 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 movies, TV shows, and animated shows are all going to be interconnected, but also the sa- they're planning on signing actors over like a 10-year period, which Marvel does that too. But like they're going to sign them on for all three tiers. So it's like if you play Batman in a movie... You also will play him. him in the TV show, and you'll also yeah. voice him on the animated show. And they're also going to voice him in the video games, apparently, as well. And the video game Which aspect as well. Is gonna if be it a, works well, it's yeah. going to be amazing. Also, but there's a lot yeah. of room for stuff. Up. Also, <laughs> yeah. on one hand, this is cool because it's 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 the MCU on steroids. 
on the other hand, it's going to be terrible because it's the MCU on steroids. Steroids. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, on one yeah. hand, if this works, it's going to be great. All these interconnected things. But on the other hand, it's like we just got done complaining and we complain every episode yeah. about how the MCU is too it's interconnected. extra homework incoming. <laughs> yeah. Not only do you have to watch everything, but like the filmmakers have to be like, oh, we can't do this because that guy's appearing in, in this movie yeah. in next summer and, and this TV show yeah. can't uh, say this word because it means this and the... And that's going to affect not only that, but the animated yeah. things. It's just like, um, could be a disaster. If James, if James, if they pull this off and James Gunn is, is, is correct, this is like, and all these movies are going to have their own distinct style, but take place in a larger multiverse, multiverse or universe. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could be good. It could be good. Yeah. Do you have the list? Yeah. Well, fir- first Shazam 2 is still coming out. Obviously it's, I mean, we're obviously going to ignore everything up until the reset. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, I think Shazam 2 is just kind of like they're releasing because they have to. And it's all, <laughs> yeah. it's almost, it's out in like a, a few weeks or whatever. So it's like, that's obviously coming out. Can't do anything. Um, whether Zachary Levi stays on and they continue with that, probably not. But for the moment, that's coming up. Um, the Flash is still coming out for some reason. Uh, man, <laughs> you know what? Ezra Miller's performance better be gold standard. I just, I, I they better have, win Academy Awards for this performance I'll, for DC to yeah. be spending this much drama think, on them. I want to be in the room where James Gunn's like, yeah, sorry, buds, we're not renewing your contract. I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, so, so Shazam 2's got Blue, Blue Beetle, they've finished filming and that's coming out That'd be cool, soon-ish. Hopefully. Is that, but they that's haven't, insular enough, they can just sweep it appara- into the new... <laughs> apparently that's what they're doing. Apparently James Gunn has been like, look, it's its own thing and we're just kind of Gonna just kind gonna of co-opt it into our new yeah, universe, yeah. which is fair because what's his name, Jolo? Um, yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, uh, and now they cancelled our boy. If oh yeah, they cancelled Cobra Kai. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. Don't, oh, yeah, don't, don't get me that. started. <laughs> Star Crystal over again. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, like because I have no hope for Blue Beetle. I'll be honest. I, that considering it's still technically under the old DC yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. it's insular enough and it's a Shazam situation where it's a good movie but sure it hasn't been untainted. It hasn't been tainted I'm sure yet. it'll be kind of like the first Shazam where it's like, okay, this is fine. Like, this is good. Yeah. But I don't think it'll be great or anything. Um, but yeah, they're keeping that. But then The Flash, which they should have cancelled ages ago. But I think the problem is, one, it's they Flash spent, much like they spent way Miller. too much money on it's it. It's also still it's too connected to everything else to yeah, be but I think worth because it. they're doing the Flashpoint Paradox and it's going to reset that they're going to use that to reset the universe how appropriate which yeah so they could technically still get rid of Ezra Miller and be like oh uh, there's a new Flash it's Wally West now Barry Allen um, is we're retiring Ezra time. Miller <laughs> and yeah and it's like oh and we're changing it and it's like and that's why all the actors are different I've always maintained they don't need to do that. No, they just, just need to it. stop it. Yeah, that's it. Start just, again. And start just be again. honest. Don't explain it. No, just it's a reset. Yeah. Have still, to say, yeah. James Gunn has to say it's a yeah. reset. You don't have to get any actors back or whatever. Just be like, yeah. it's a new new universe now. Yeah. Um, and apparently Aquaman 2 is still in production, which... I'm assuming that won't be connected to um, yeah. the new ones. Cause he I was, feel like they're just uh, doing it for con- yeah, contractual, contractual Jason, obligations. And then after that, they're just going to be like, because no. Jason Momoa confirmed that like there's not going to be any new Aquaman project soon, but he's still involved in DC in an undisclosed yeah. role. Lobo, uh, wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's like when someone asked him, "What's the favorite superhero? What's your favorite character you want to play?" He's like Lobo. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, and the man looks like and, Lobo. And if anyone, Put some white face paint on. If him anyone, if anyone could do <laughs> yeah. it, James Gunn could get it done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, his movies are so crazy, and Lobo would make perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, so apparently that's what's still kind of in canon and coming out. Yeah. Um. I was pleased to see they're also rebooting Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that. No, because I, 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 I never saw the cancelled TV no, show. No, I got, got a whole... F- yeah. You should see my notes. Half of it's just Swamp Thing notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold my whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So, first he announced... Uh, James Gunn announced the Creature Commandos animated series. I never read those Which, comments. yeah, I'm not really familiar with that. But it's like in his wheelhouse of like weirdo, uh, you know, a ragtag team. Yeah. yeah. Um. The big big announcement, which we already mentioned, is that new Superman movie, Superman Legacy, 
which will really be the starting off point and which will also be the um what's the word like the te- like the test Tent- to see the, to yeah. see that this might work kind of thing yeah there's a word for it but no like, i can't find you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what i mean yeah, of I like mean, yeah. this will set the precedent It'll be the for first like, indication for what we're going to be getting well, yeah. look, I think i've the always nerds, said the nerds will turn out all right, it's a James Gunn yeah, but even regime. Whether it's good or bad, you'll get people who are like, "This is the best movie ever, worst movie yeah, ever." Yeah. You'll get the comic book nerds who say it's the best. But or, I don't think they'll have to worry about box office. You know what I mean? I think people will oh, turn people, out to see. Oh yeah, even yeah. me who's we, sick we of superhero movies to, yeah. will probably have to go. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think yeah, it it'll because like I've always, you know I've said many times, Man of Steel was d- it, awful, 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 awful movie, and also it ruined all of the DCEU because it was their foundation and you couldn't build anything yeah. off it because the foundations were rotten. If they get Superman Legacy right... It sets a tone, yeah. If they if they pull an Iron Man, which I'm, I think that's what they're trying to do is just do the Iron Man and then er- everything falls into place, um, then, yeah, if they can go anywhere from here. And like we said, James Gunn understands and he likes Superman and so hopefully we'll get a better interpretation of the character and yeah. a definitive Superman movie for modern audiences, because we yeah. haven't had a good Superman movie since the one from the seventies. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. most young people and even older people probably can't get into that kind of movie. Yeah. yeah. As great it is, as it is. Um, so we, we need yeah. a, a and we've def- had like 1700 Batman in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they're also doing a Lanterns as TV show. I'm, I'm excited for this. Which, cautiously, down. Yeah. cautiously optimistic. I think what's interesting, or what I'm most interested about it, is that they've just said, "Screw it, we're going to have both Hal Jordan and John Stewart, yeah. the two main Green Lanterns." Instead of picking one or doing one, yeah. and then over the years transitioning, they're just like, "No, both of them at the same time." Yeah, why not? Right? Maybe Hal Jordan yeah. will die or retire at or some go point mad. yeah but <laughs> like uh, from what they've said it's both and i'm like oh this well, is exactly what i want this is what i said when they need to yeah, grow some balls they where they're just like both i've read it described as like a true detective style investigation yeah. slash mystery. which everything they announced was like it's a so-and-so style it's a game of thrones style it's a true detective style and i understand why they're doing it from a marketing Marketing, yeah, they have marketing to sell it to the, the yeah. investors or whatever. I don't like the idea. Apparently, it's set mostly on Earth. I don't like that idea. Um, it could be an origin story. I don't like that idea either. We've spoken about origin stories. The last stories. Green Lantern movie was crap. Yeah, we've, <laughs> we've spoken a lot about origin stories yeah. are always the most boring stories in comic books. And DC had the prime opportunity to just be like, oh, it's just a Batman movie. He just shows up. And I think that's kind of what they're doing with some of their stuff. But, yeah, I, I don't necessarily like that it's... Const- I, and this is so early on that yeah, this will all change. Yet. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, they're also doing... I think it's a... a can you look this up? Uh, I've got the, a, the Authority. The Authority is... Is it a series? That's a film. Okay, it's a movie. Yeah. This one will be interesting because... Um, I haven't read the comics. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with the comics, but apparently it's just like a soap opera, you know, big uh, universe yeah. space of like uh you know eternals or avengers style superheroes but they all go they're a bit um yeah like the the little synopsis i've got here yeah. is wildstorm characters will join the dcu oh. as members of the authority wildstorm yeah. characters who That's take matters into their own hands yeah. to believe yeah to they do what they believe is right yeah so like, it's just like i think that was like an alt dc label kind of separate for a while yeah but, got but they Disney, made by jim lee they re like edgy characters they kind of they kind of rebooted it yeah um and and that's kind of what they're adapting of like these team of superheroes who will do anything the fact that they're playing with um those characters yeah is super interesting because those aren't normal dc characters no and especially because it's like they're anti-heroes i guess from what i understand so it's kind of like, and apparently the comics get really crazy and out there. Yeah. So that's good. Um, then they've got the Wonder, a Wonder Woman prequel, which is a TV show, I think. Yes. Which is like Paradise Lost. Yeah, which is like a a Themis, like Them- Game of Thrones on Themyscira Island with all the Amazons. 
genesis and political intrigue of an island that, of all women, yeah, as it's described. That as. could be cool, but we'll see. The, the, yeah, I don't know. Like a lot the of these, a lot of these woman, could fall yeah, into the MCU trap of like, yeah. oh, it's just another piece of content for our universe. It's like, I, why I are we go- watching this? Why is this important? I hope it's a fresh take. Because Especially the- if Gal Gadot's not coming back yeah. and if they're going to reboot one, Woman. Maybe they're going to use it to reboot one Woman. But I again, again, they need to give... I mean, I know audiences are dumb, but they need to give people some credit. Just recast it. Don't explain it. Just yeah. start the movie new. Yeah. New design, new director, new everything. I'm sure when these things are closer to coming out, James Gunn and when they're doing the media interviews it's going to be made perfectly clear to everybody that oh yeah this is so early on like yeah. everything we say now doesn't yeah. matter and this this is also ephemeral yeah, this is which us is, hyping ourselves up yeah we, which is one of my you know, one of my problems with podcasting is like we say all this stuff and it doesn't yeah. matter but, but this is huge news considering we've been complaining yeah, about this for years yeah, ten, yeah. like <laughs> 10 years I've been talking about this um, this one's interesting The Brave and the Bold yeah a Batman movie but with Batman and Damian his Wayne. son, Damian Wayne, who becomes Rom- Robin. But Damian Wayne in the comics is like the fourth Robin. Yeah. Um, but that's good. Like, no, we've had enough so Batman origins. That's the we thing. Is like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping yeah, it just yeah. starts and Batman is Batman. And he's like, yeah. he's your son. He's Robin now. And it's like, but does that mean there's going to be the Bat family as well? And they're going to have like Dick Grayson as so. Nightwing and maybe oh, one of the other... Ro- yeah, like, uh, I, I would assume. Tim Drake as yeah. the other Robin and like... like I mean, Who, who's the villain? Red Hood. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would assume, right? <laughs> because this is the thing as well with Bat, Super, get Batgirl in there. Like, make, you can make an argument with Superman. We haven't seen him all that much. Like he's been in, he's had his movies, mm. but like, yeah, Batman has been around for like everyone knows Batman. Yeah, we've seen a lot of we've Batman seen a movies. A lot, a lot, a lot of Batman. Yeah, just drop us in mid Batman. You know what yeah. I mean? Drop us in. Is, is, we don't need you. We don't need you. I said. That's what I've always said. Like as much as as much as I like done it again and again. Yeah, as much as I like the Batman, leave you one alone now. Yeah, no, that, that's what I've always said. Is like don't do origins anymore. Like you don't need to see, especially with someone like Batman and even Superman, you don't need to see the origin. But the fact that they're just skipping to, like, the Bat Family stuff, where he's like, he's all the fam... That's interesting to me. I would be interested to see what they do with that. Um, especially because one of the problems with the old DCEU was it's like, they start Man of Steel, and it's like, here's the introduction to the universe, here's Superman, and then they're like, he's grizzled Batman, he's old, and he's like, hates everyone, and, ba- and <laughs> yeah. Robin died, and he wants to kill Superman. I'm like, hang on. This is like the first two movies in your universe. <laughs> you can't start this way. But I think if they have like a nice, hopeful Superman movie and then a Bat Family movie where everyone's kind of getting along and doing their own thing, they've already established half the universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and everything yeah. else will fall into place. Um, Essentially. That's just wishful thinking. I think it's, it's interesting because James Gunn has his MCU background where he's already made some of the most popular MCU movies. Yeah. You know, he's friends with Kevin Feige. Well, then he did he did The Suicide Squad for yeah. DC, which was, like, not great, but was, like, a better DC movie. It was, like, fun in its own right. And then he, he made a spin-off of that, which is the Peacemaker TV I show. I seen it. Which I haven't seen yet, but apparently it's good. Yeah. And apparently that's getting a second season and uh, oh, I'm a sure he TV show. All that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I created this, so this is obviously yeah. getting. <laughs> um, but the between season one and two of Pe- like Peacemaker season two hasn't been really announced yet. It's just that yeah. might come out. But apparently, sort of between season one and two, he's going to make. Uh, this has been announced. Is the the Walla. Oh yeah, Am- yeah, yeah, Amanda Waller yeah. TV show, which sounds like a bad idea, like con- just content for your streaming service kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, maybe but he has to. Like, I don't I'm, know what he's been told. Yeah, but. I like because of James Gunn and because I know, like, I- I'm a bit more hopeful. And apparently, yeah. Peacemaker, I'm gonna watch it eventually. Apparently, it is good. So if it takes place in that kind of universe, apparently, it could be fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that'll be interesting. The next one's interesting as well, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Yeah. Which, if you're starting with a great Superman movie, then the the Bat Family movie, and then a Supergirl movie, I like mean, you said, got a great, on, you've already got a great basis this is if you already, pull it off. Uh, and this is based on a comic series specifically, apparently? Yeah, a recent... Um, yeah, Tom King's comic series. Yeah, which apparently is really good. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, it's not... It's, yeah, you're not ma- if you're adapting it, then... 
I don't know if it's a straight well. adaptation, yeah, but it's yeah. it's inspired but, by that. Like I know MCU, so, I know the MCU does draw on their comic talent to help provide context for stories and stuff. Yeah. But I think that one of the benefits of there being less of a division between the different aspects of the DC Entertainment Wing uh, is that they can, you know, uh, James Gunn can be like, "What about if we do a store like this?" and then get the people who helped make it. Uh, to assist him on a more immediate level mm. and, like they can actually plan that out in like the games as well and stuff like that and like I feel like for Marvel there's a separation between the wings and I, I'm just speaking out of my ass I don't know this for a fact yeah, yeah. but it feels that way it feels more of a machine would it also Whereas be with it, James Gunn it feels like he's like this is a cool story arc what if we do this let's get these people in here let's you know mm. would it also be fair to say that DC does arcs and standalone stories within the universe better oh, than Marvel 100% oh, yeah. so, all, the, all the best standalone like one shot graphic novels yeah. are DC yeah MCU so, MCU has all the big issues yeah. like the ongoing issues but the DC uh, has the standalone the stories best are standalone. premium in yeah. the industry yeah, yeah. so you're already at a, at a better starting point with dc because you can it's a bit easier to adapt yeah. stories more than like yeah i've got yeah. a story that takes place over 600 issues you're like yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to distill a, the essence of that into yeah, one yeah, movie yeah yeah, yeah yeah um next thing is interesting as well as booster gold on tv <laughs> show i love my That's man super, i love my man yeah. booster gold which super is super weird yeah but, like yeah. see this is the thing is these these announcements are so because it's, it's like, see, the, he knows what people want to see, like the Bat Family and stuff. Yeah. But he also knows the characters. Like, you know Guardians of the Galaxy? Bef- before yeah, we Guardians talked of about the Galaxy, it one time. Before Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie came out, they were a lesser known property. The yeah. nerds knew Guardians of the Galaxy and yeah. stuff like that. But they weren't like, you know, they weren't like Spider-Man. Yeah, right? exactly. And like, that's what Booster Gold kind of is to a lesser extent. People know that's Booster because he's a part of the, like, the main universe. Yeah. But he's not Superman. That's but, why James Gunn's so interesting yeah, he for this because he likes these, comic books. He can identify like, the characters well, that he knows yeah. will be entertaining on the And he screen. likes Booster weird Go- stuff. Booster Gold is funny. Yeah. yeah. Booster Gold is interesting from... He's like he A lovable loser. Lovable loser, but he adapts for TV and film very easily almost. Yeah. yeah. Because it's just like real basic elements, kind of like Man from the Future back in the past... Yeah, and he wants to. Be, he wants to be a superhero, he's the protector of the timeline. Yeah, he wants to be famous, and he's he uses, colorful, and yeah. you know, he's but, like a Ryan Reynolds kind of energy, dead yeah, 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 energy, yeah. not to the same yeah, extent. Yeah, I know. Him, but man. he's got that th- feel going that can really translate very well to TV or film, right? Yeah, and games. Just as an idea, the Booster Gold kind of thing. He comes from the future. He's got a little bit of high tech, and he thinks he's a superhero. It's very basic. But yeah. it can be done. How has it not been done already? You know what yeah, I mean? but that's the thing is because yeah. Booster Gold isn't that famous yeah. uh, a mainstream yeah. character. But the, James Gunn comes in. He's like, no, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be. We're yeah. going to do these weird things. We're going to do these yeah. little. And, and like, he's the great guy for that because you know he identifies the strengths of the characters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and you know he yeah. made Guardians and he made Suicide Squad and it's like all these weird little characters show up and he's like he. It's like Peacemaker. Was, Peacemaker is super popular TV show. Yeah. But again, he was a lesser known DC character. Yeah. And even you know, when, like, when Starro shows up at yeah. the end of <laughs> The Suicide Squad, and you're like, oh, this is so weird, and, and James Gunn just being weird. and I know. also trust him. I, I know that he's not in charge of casting per se. Mm. Like, they have the casting um, director for that or whatever, the. You know, yeah. I guess um, if you're but, overseeing it, you'd have some. He, like sway. you know, he chose John Cena, not a, who's not but an also, obvious choice for Peacemaker. Yeah. And apparently, he really does a great job. I haven't seen the TV show, but he apparently was good in the movie. I he's guess, like he's yeah. he's a good Peacemaker. He, yeah, Same think, with Batista for um Drax. Uh, Drax yeah. And even Chris Pratt for um Star Lord. Yeah. You know, like he, t- he I think he has a good knack for like really appropriate casting for movies and TV. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully he can bring that as well to boost the gold and to brave and the bold, you know, like who are you going to cast for Damien? God knows. Mm, you know what I mean? Interesting, yeah. So it's like, I, are they going to age him up? People have been suggesting, um, was it uh, 11 from Umbrella Academy? Is that the, the boy? Uh, yeah. Oh, number five. <laughs> number yeah, five. number five. Yeah. But see, that's my point. It's like, so the, the, these are the key He'll be great, but yeah, it depends what age they make yeah. him. Because Damien's are, quite young like, in these the are comic key issues, books, right? they'll probably can, make him older. You live and die based on your casting as well as your script. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, so he doesn't like Henry Havill for Superman, for example. Yeah. You know, he's, because someone asked him, why did you fire Henry Cavill? Yeah. And he said, Henry Cavill that's was never... That's not what we had in mind. He said he was never cast for the role. Yeah. Because that part's done now. He wants, yeah. he has different ideas for who should embody Superman. Mm. So like I said, the casting's half it's like 50 percent of the struggle for someone like james gunn because mm. like i trust him with the well, script, he has to, you know? yeah yeah he has to restart it all yeah and the big the one. next the big one before we get to the big one the big boy my my main man 
Um, then there's the Elseworlds thing, which is like the separate canon of like we're still making these movies, but they're not really oh, connected. Like the Joker and all that yeah, it's stuff. Joker two and the Batman two, and I think yeah. there was another one they they referenced. Um, and I I hope they'll do more of that stuff. Yeah, as like well. a sta- like standalone movies. Yeah, that, yeah, because as 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 all these are exciting or whatever, but they could easily just fall into the MCU trap where yeah. it's all the same. And he, James Gunn has said. And I believe him that they're going to try and differentiate each one. Yeah. It's going to have its own because we've talked about how the MCU sucks out all the creativity. They get a filmmaker on, and then they're just yeah. like, "It's a they, they're all the same movie." It's a just cookie cutter, stuff, paint yeah. by numbers movie. You, we're just slapping your director's name yeah. on it. You get to direct some of the acting scenes. Apart from the other than which that, everyone hated, and we were like, oh, "Yeah," and so we were funny. like, "Oh, <laughs> actually, I see how Chloe Zhao's directing came <laughs> yeah. through." Yeah, and everyone was like, "Ah, this is the worst movie." <laughs> um, but yeah, like if they can pull that off, an MCU style in connected yeah. universe where each movie feels like an actual movie directed by a filmmaker and brings their own style. That'd be sick. I'm also yeah. hoping, especially with Swamp Thing, which we'll get to in a minute. I don't know. I don't think they can pull this off with whoever whoever's running, you know, whoever the, the suits are. If not, not only the interconnectedness is... Uh, differentiated by the filmmaking and the style of it but could they have interconnected movies that have different uh ratings so not all pg-13 well i mean the whole thing is if they're because comparing if they've already given us tone descriptions i would hope the show's labeled as true detective yeah, feeling but and the show, feeling shows is different because fe- tv in america is weird where you can get away with a lot That's more true. and and the ratings yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. but like in terms of the main movies like i'm assuming you know obviously superman batman will probably be pg-13 but like swamp thing like will that be uh like and because thus suicide squad was r yeah and assumedly the shows of it based on that are very violent is like will there be opportunities to stay in the same universe but one's a bit more adult and one's I a bit so. that we'll have to wait and see for that one yeah and like I don't. I don't think so because of this. Like I said, the suits, and you have to market it to everyone, and you have to you have to make sure that the people bringing their kids know what they're getting into. But that's why we have rating systems, and parents need to be yeah, that's more it. aware Just, of that. You know, um, over watch, know what your kids are doing. Yeah, I don't think I missed any, did I? No. Before we get no, more. I've got the list here. We've gone through everything. It's a big list, and yeah, and we've th- gone through everything but this one. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how how it how it unfolds. The biggest announcement for me, yeah, I've talked about on the show before. I'm a massive Swamp Thing fan. Other than Batman, he's probably my favorite comic book character who's superhero. Constantine um, approved. Yeah, I've read all the comic books. I love him. Um, and listeners might remember in 2019, there was you know the, the there was like the Doom Patrol DC yeah. series. There was Titans DC series, and then there was the Swamp Thing DC series. Which promptly got cancelled. Yeah, and before it even finished airing, like, they cancelled it. For tax reasons, which is the and worst appa- part. Yeah, apparently <laughs> yeah. it was because, like, someone forgot to sign a form and uh, they didn't get their tax rebate. And I was like, that's the worst reason. But apparently that wasn't true. And if the, uh, in uh, apparently what actually ended up happening was whoever was in charge of the shows at that time just didn't like it. Because he's like, this is too dark and serious. Let's cancel it. For some reason, Titans and and Doom Patrol were okay. Um, I laugh if, in reality, this is the entire reason James Gunn signed on. Because he's like, no, you don't get to cancel the Swamp Thing. <laughs> like, oh, if he loves the Swamp Thing as much as me, then uh, yeah, like- yeah. But so, like, the show, sh- the sh- before the season even ends or even finished airing they cancelled it and they, it was originally 13 episode season and they cut it down to 10 episodes so the the right the creators of the, sh- the makers of the show had to like scramble to kind of shorten you know shave three episodes off and be like oh, okay we're gonna have to wrap it up um in one season um t- titans ended up being okay but i stopped watching after the second season because i just I had too much to watch and yeah. it wasn't at, it wasn't so good that I had to but Doom Patrol I kept watching and uh 
that that's really good that's really funny obviously the production side is the budget isn't that big but it's a really funny show um both those shows are also ending with their next or their current seasons um but yeah swamp thing back 2019 gets cancelled prematurely i was devastated yeah i remember i was so devastated to the point where i couldn't even watch it like i'm like this is just too sad yeah Yeah. yeah. i'm like not only it's not the point i was like this is just sad yeah yeah um so recently before this dc announcement i was just like i I actually the day it came out on blu-ray because they released the the season on blu-ray i went out and bought it i'm like i need this but i never watched it i was just too sad i was devastated um, but recently, before these DC announcements even I knew was a thing, I was just like, I had a, I had like a bit of spare time. I was like, I'm going to find, like, I think it's time. I think I've healed. <laughs> 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 I think the, um, yeah, the pain is gone and I can just appreciate what they did have a chance to do. The, you know, the one season they got to do. Yeah, like um, me with Race Bubbles. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I eventually ever get around to that. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't even get to start it. Now I'm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so luckily I had the Blu-ray because it's not on streaming anywhere that I could see. I might be wrong. It's not on Binge. It's not. It's not. Did you anywhere. try the DC Universe oh. app? No, but we don't technically have that yet. It's not. It's not streaming in Australia. I should. Oh say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In America, it might be somewhere. But I think they, not only did they disrespect the show by cancelling it prematurely, but the fact that no one who does want to watch that one season can easily do it. Like I had the Blu-ray. Luckily, they released it on Blu-ray at all. They could have just not, or they could have just put on DVD. So, I'm grateful for that. It's bare bones. There's no, you know, no special features or anything. You can watch the thing on Nine Now. That doesn't that doesn't even count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to count that. But yeah... Uh, Blu-ray was pretty bare bones, but it was nice to have. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and it's I know like I like it was a good show. Like it wasn't great, it didn't blow me out of the water, but it looked nice enough. You could t- tell they spent a little bit of money on it. Um, like it, 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 it took all the stuff from the comic books and kind of streamlined it and distilled it down into. A TV show form, so they combine some characters yeah. and they move things around in the time. But it's like otherwise, it's like a faithful adaptation. Um, they lean very heavily into like a horror aspect. Nice. Um, and well, I think what's really good about it is like it had a lot of really good practical effects. Not only was Swamp Thing a practical suit and he looked really cool, but there were a lot of like creatures and things that were practical, and I really appreciate yep. that. Obviously, there was some CGI where they had to use it and it's like the budget wasn't high enough for it and it was pretty bad. But nothing Again, this too, was... Yeah, this yeah. is low-grade TV. It's not like, yeah, and, and this, this isn't like, you know, the Disney Plus... Like, they didn't have the infinite it's not budget. budget. They didn't yeah. even have infinite budget. And we discussed how the Disney Plus stuff, despite their budget, the CGI is garbage anyway. So this one, yeah, it looked nice and they had some good... and. Mostly I was impressed by like the swamp settings and the, I assume there was like lots of sets because you couldn't keep going out to the swamp and filming. I would like to see behind the scenes of it, how they shot it all. And But I, like I said, there's no special features um, on the on the disc. Um, obviously, there's some uh, you know, melodramatic... Uh, TV know, stuff, yeah. Soap opery, you know, romancy stuff. But mostly it's just like kind of, you know, violent and cool superhero stuff and developing. And you could see you could see where they were going, like setting things up for the future seasons, setting up villains and origin stories for the villains and stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what tone the movie takes. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is there's a shame that this season got cancelled and... I'm also kind of surprised at the fact that they're relaunching it as a film and not starting it with TV. Well, to that's get the thing people... is because they had this season, and now you know now they're doing the they're announcing all the DC stuff, and the the fact that Swamp Thing is included at all. Yeah, I mean it's one yeah, especially in phase it's one. one yeah, yeah, it's it's one thing for all these kind of lesser known, and you know 
IPs to be included and oh that's James Gunn being weird he's going to make a creature commandos animated show and a and a uh, the authority movie and it's just like oh that's weird but the fact that Swamp Thing is included I mean I greatly appreciate it but it is makes this announcement infinitely more interesting um and I think they are going to lean into the horror aspect I hope so um, and apparently it's being based on the Alan Moore run, which is the best the classic best run, run yeah. of Swamp Whoa. Thing. Um, Very expensive I, to buy. No, it's not. The Alan Moore runs. Yeah, I've got them. They're easy to find. I mean, they're expensive in the comic. The fact that comic books are expensive, but they're yeah, not the overly. Like, yeah. No, I, got, I can't remember how, I got them, how much I got it for, but it's not overly. Ex- it's yeah, it's yeah. expensive. Yeah, in I the can fact read them on the app. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's it's a given that I'm looking forward to yeah. to it, but I am very, like I said earlier, I'm very wary of this whole announcement and this whole situation. It could come crumbling down, um, and I don't think it's all going to work, and I don't think I'm going to like all of the things that come out. We'll see. But it all this, depends on how much they leave James Gunn alone to oversee it and not get the, yeah. Like Marvel and, and works if he does, Feige is up the top. If he right? does, if he does bring in filmmakers and let them do what they do best, and they can put their own uh, yeah imprint on it, and apparently James Mangold is attached to or rumored to be attached to the Swamp Thing movie, and he's great. Um, and yeah. he 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 did. Logan, which is probably the best superhero movie other than Spider Verse in the last ten, uh, five ish, ten ish years, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. I don't think they'll be able to pull it off just because Swamp Thing can. I think he's a hard character to. Yeah, do. definitely. Yeah. That's the I was TV slightly show, surprised while they were starting the into TV, the film. The TV and show, not a slow burn yeah, TV show. The TV show did a good job with what the budget it had and the time it had and the format it had. Um, I think the fact that they're not just doing another TV show is because they don't just want to reboot like what they yeah. technically have already done, even though it's a different universe. But it'd be interesting to see what they do, bringing this to the big screen. Um, yeah, I'll I'll be very interested and and I'm excited. But yeah, like I said, it's all so early days. This conversation was basically just because it came news it came up. Yeah. It's exciting and, and big news, and it came up at the right time. But all this doesn't mean anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're not new. We're not breaking news. We're just having a, a waffle about. Yeah, it and also things. like all of this could be garbage. All of this is meaningless. Um, we'll have to see when the movie comes out. We'll review or the show. We'll review that. Yeah, and like I said, the outstanding circumstances and the leading up and the whatever doesn't matter depends on how good the product is but i have faith in james gunn and yeah i think all depends as i said it all depends him, on how much dc let james gunn run it yeah run he, the show him, and him, people not get involved and him being a part of both mcu and dc like i think he knows both sides you know and him being in DC. <laughs> him being like a weirdo indie filmmaker and a big budget blockbuster filmmaker and him being like a comic nerd and like i think he has a good uh he had out of anyone he's probably one of the best fits to do it yeah so and considering this announcement and how weird and um eclectic it is I feel like he's been working on it for a while, bef- even before he was announced as the new him and Peter Safran were like the new. I don't mm. know. I can't remember what their title is, but yeah, you know, there, there would have been a lot of hush hush. Let's keep a secret. Yeah, work. Probably, we're we're coming up with a plan so to present. Probably the last few years they've probably been working on this, um, especially if they have like release dates planned of like, oh, this is coming out in twenty twenty five, and we're doing this show, and then this movie, and then this show. It's like I feel like. They've had time to, and this isn't just a knee jerk. Oh, you got yeah. the job. Now we're announced. It's like I feel like they've been planning this for yeah. a little while, which is a good sign. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. What I mean, we're not going to see the Flash. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not. not. Flash, Even yeah. if it is the greatest movie ever, which they're they're saying behind the scenes. I think they're just saying that because they spent a lot of money and they want people to see it. Look, I'll be real. Um, I'm probably not going to see any of the new, like the DC movies that are. Part Unt- of the until Superman, character. until the new yeah, Superman, until Superman, yeah. yeah, I think we'll, uh, yeah, I'm, I, like, I really like David F. Sandberg, it's David F. Sandberg, the director of the Shazam movies, and I want him to do well, 
but I just can't bring myself to spend money on yeah, like, this no. garbage anymore. No. Like I'm not, not 100%. interested. So hundred percent. Yeah, it's a exciting time. Uh, we've talked about before, like it's a great time to be a nerd, but it's also an awful time to be a nerd because a lot of this stuff ends up being terrible and sometimes insulting. So, <laughs> but I think James Gunn and you know they 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 know what they're doing. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. We'll review it when it comes out, and if it's bad, we'll we'll tell you. We will. Yeah. I reckon that's about it for today. Yeah, it's enough. I'm tired. I'm this hungry. This is probably the, one of the longest episodes in the long time. Yeah, we life. haven't done a long episode <laughs> yeah. in a long time because we haven't. We've we're still having technical difficulties at the studio, so there's a lot going on. And but we're lucky. We got we yeah. got some extra time. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, once you get a start, once you get us start talking about nerd, nerd stuff, stuff yeah. you that's can't it. stop. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, please like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram at Tuesday Review AU. Um, we'll be back next week. Yeah, let uh, us know if there's anything you want us to talk about or anything you're excited about, any nerd stuff, any superhero stuff, whatever. Let us know. See you next week, everybody. Adios, yeah. cousins. <laughs>